Good evening, everyone. Today is January the 10th of 2023. I'd like to say Happy New Year to our original one family. Uh, this is the reg regular scheduled meeting of the original one Board of Commissioners. I do have a statement to read that says, pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act, which is FOIA, the public has been provided access to the live stream of the meeting via the district's website, which is www.richland1.org as well as in person with limited seating. Uh, at this time, uh, is there a motion to go uh, into executive session? Madam Chair, I move that we go into executive session. Second. Chair. Okay. There's a motion that's been made by Commissioner Devine to go into executive session. It's been properly seconded by Commissioner uh, Clyburn. Um, we'll open the floor for any question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, I will add that there is an item, Dr. Whispoon, I believe we will be deleting, which is 3.2, which is the administrative hire, which uh, is aligned to our public session 10.2. That item has been pulled from the agenda. Um, at this time, we will call for the vote. There is no other question or discussion. Electronic? We're going to take it verbal. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose say nay. Eyes have it. We will go into executive session at this time to discuss an employee suspension, an administrative hire, leave of absence, and the hiring of personnel. And we will return at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you. There's also, and I'm sorry I didn't read everything in, um, Office of the Board is also included, right. which will include a parent request to be heard and also the legal status report on the Miramonte versus Richland One School District case. I needed to add those items as to what we will be discussing. Thank you. At this time, we will go into executive session. Good evening, everyone. The time is now 7.09 p.m. Uh, today is uh, January the 10th of 2023. This is the first meeting of the Richland One Board of Commissioners, so we say Happy New Year's to all of you. Uh, the board has been in executive session uh, since the hour of 6 p.m. We did leave executive session at 6.51 p.m. Uh, it was motioned by Commissioner Devine. Uh, it was seconded by Commissioner Bishop. And the vote was unanimous to exit executive session. Um, at this time, we will begin our meeting for tonight. Um, and we will begin with um, in public participation. Let me also note to the board, remember, we've stretched item 3-2 off of executive, which will correlate with 10-2, has been uh, scratched from the agenda for tonight. So to those that are in the audience, uh, there will be no 10.2 administrative hire. Uh, at this time, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the invocation by Reverend Dr. Thurman Bowens, Jr. of Trinity Baptist Church. Good evening. And let us bow our head and let us pray. Father, we thank you for this awesome occasion, and we thank you, dear Lord, for your presence and the promises, dear Lord, and we ask now for your, again, your presence in this meeting tonight. We pray that your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will always guide this school board, not only on tonight, but every time they will meet. I pray that this one school board will always have the best interest of our children, our teachers, and certainly our staff. May they forever follow that which is right, that which is fair, that which is just. I offer this prayer in the matchless, marvelous, magnificent name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Let us all say amen. 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 And thank you so much, uh, Pastor Bowens, for being here with us. We certainly thank you and Trinity Baptist Church, which is a part of the Richland One family. Thank you for all that you do to support us in this district. Thank you. Hmm? Thank you, Reverend. At this time, we will move to 6.2. We will call for the adoption of the agenda where we've already noted that we've scratched 10.2. It's the pleasure of the board. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bishop, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote electronically. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The agenda for tonight's meeting has been adopted. Let the record also reflect that all Richland One commissioners are in attendance. 
uh, for tonight's meeting. We'll now move to 6.3, which is our school board spotlight, which will be presented by Commissioners Clyburn and Commissioner Devine. Okay, thank you, Chairwoman Harris, and thank you very much for allowing this me this opportunity. Uh, I am presenting tonight's school board spotlight for January 10th, 2023. Seven Richland One students were named semifinalists in the 2023 National Merit Scholarship Program, which recognizes academically talented high school students across the country. The 16,000 semifinalists will compete for $28 million in scholarship money. Scholarships will be offered in the spring. Less than 1% of high, U.S. high school seniors achieve the distinction of being named National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. We are pleased to be able to recognize our semifinalists tonight. First, Principal Susan Childs will introduce AC Flores, National Merit Semifinalist. Right. Principal Childs, thank you. Thank you and good evening, members of the board and Dr. Witherspoon. I have two students from AC Flores here tonight to introduce. The first is Judith Shaver, who is a senior at AC Flores High School. She is enrolled in our IB Diploma Program at Flores, she is also the captain of the varsity track and cross country teams and has gained all region recognition in both. In addition, she is the secretary of the Spanish National Honor Society where she tutors students in Spanish. She has also received the Smith College Book Award, works part time at Heathwood Hall, and is a member of our National Honor Society, Key Club, and Ultimate Frisbee Club. Judith plans on studying exercise science or physics in college and hopes to pursue a career in physical therapy. Judith Shaver. <laughs> Lily Lawther is a senior at AC Flora High School and is enrolled also in the IB Diploma Program. She plans to study anthropology in college and become an archaeologist. She received the Walford College Creative Writing Book Award and works part-time as a shift lead at a local restaurant. At Flora, she's the Vice President of the International Thespian Society and the Assistant Director for Xanadu, our upcoming current musical. She is a member of the Honors, National Honor Society and International Club and is the President of the Feminist Club and one of the chapter leads for the Columbia chapter of March for Our Lives and a youth-led anti-gun violence organization. Lily Lothar. So we're going to take pictures. Okay. So next, we're going to have Principal Dr. Kevin Hessinger, uh, who will introduce Dreer's National Merit Semifinalist. Thank you, and good evening. Uh, I appreciate uh, Madam Chairperson and the board and Dr. Witherspoon for allowing and gifting me with this opportunity to recognize these Richland One scholars. So tonight, uh, we will begin with the first of five individuals who wow. attend Dreer High School who are a National Merit semifinalist. First is Jacob Merrill. Jacob Merrill, son of Mark and Susan Merrill, has a current GPA of 4.866 and is completed, <clears throat> excuse me, projected to complete a total of 11 college courses through the Advanced Placement Program at Dreer High School. Jacob is also an AP Capstone student, an engineering program completer, a member of the National Honor Society, the National Technical Honor Society, and the Key Club. He's also played football at Dreer since he was a freshman as a linebacker, tight end, defensive end, and long snapper. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we use our athletes a lot. <laughs> Uh, Jacob has also run uh, for the Dreer track and field team for the last three years. He enjoys getting involved around campus, supporting his peers at athletic events, and participating in community service projects. Next year, Jacob intends <clears throat> to attend the University of South Carolina Honors College to study either mechanical engineering or international relations. Board, I present to you Mr. Jacob Merrill. <laughs> Next, we have Bryce Alton. Bryce Alton, son of Karen and F. Wayne Alton, 
has a current GPA of 5.387 and is projected to complete a total of 13 college courses through the Advanced Placement Program at Dreher High School. Bryce is also an AP Capto Capstone student, a member of the chapter, excuse me, the Eleanor Doggett chapter of the National Honor Society and Eagle Scout with Troop 8 in Columbia, the co-captain of the Ultimate Frisbee team at Dreher, and a member of the Science Olympiad team. He enjoys reading and playing basketball during his free time and plans on studying the life sciences and possibly engineering at the university next year. I present to you Bryce Allen. Philip Sophocleus. Philip Sophocleus, son of Maria Sophocleus and John Clements, has a current GPA of 5.317 and is projected to complete a total of 13 college courses through the Advanced Placement Program at Dreher High School. Philip is also an AP Capstone student, an engineering program completer, a Chinese program completer, and a teacher cadet. In addition to being a member of the National Honor Society, the captain of the mock trial team, the president of the speech and debate team, a member of Dreher's varsity track and field team, and wouldn't you know it, an Eagle Scout. <laughs> he plans to study mathematics and chemistry at the university level next year. I present to you Mr. Philip Sufclair. Yeah. William Varner. William Varner, son of Margaret and Kevin Varner has a current GPA of 5.248 and is projected to complete a total of 12 college courses through the Advanced Placement Program at Dreher High School. Williams' academic interests include theater, visual art, English, and history. He's a member of the Dreher Drama Department and, he, oh, and also International Thespian Society and has performed significant roles in the productions of 12 Angry Jurors, Newsies, and Romeo and Juliet. Will was also the winning director of the Play in a Day competition in 2022. William is a member of the Blue Devil Mechanics, our school's robotics team, and has participated in multiple competitions as well as volunteered as a facilitator for such events. He's a member of the chapter, our chapter of the National Honor Society, a key club member, and an AP capstone student. He's also an AP scholar with distinction. Will is the recipient of Dreher's AP U.S. History Award and the University of Rochester Bosch and Lom Honorary Science Award. He intends to continue his academic interest at the university level next year. I present William Varner. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Miss Aubrey White. Aubrey White, unfortunately, was not able to be with us because of an engagement she could not break. But we want to honor her name uh, and her Richland One success. Audrey White, daughter of Alicia and Scott White, has a current GPA of 5.231 and is projected to complete a total of 13 college credits through the Advanced Placement Program at Dreher High School. She is an AP Capstone student, a member of our chapter of the National Honor Society, co-captain of the math team, a student leader of the Let's Talk Club, and a member of the... I'm sorry, uh, and the student leader of the Let's Talk Club, an organization that works through social issues with peers. She intends to study at the <coughs> university uh, level next year, but is undecided on her major at this time. Although not here, let's give a round of applause for Ms. Aubrey. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to take another picture? Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Principal Hassinger.
Thank you so much. So now we're moving on to another recognition. Uh, the South Carolina School Board's Associate, Association's Champions for Public Education Award recognizes community residents, organizations, or local businesses whose support of and contributions to public education have significantly benefited an entire school district or public schools statewide. We are pleased to have SCSBA President Gail Hughes with us tonight to present, to present the award to a Richland One Community Partner Organization. Will Ms. Hughes please come forward to make the presentation? Well, I was a little bit quick on my feet there, wasn't I? Yes, but you were. Good evening, everyone. Thank to you. Chairwoman Harris, members of the Richland One School Board, and commissioners, and the superintendent, Dr. Greg Witherspoon, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to make this special award presentation on behalf of South Carolina School Boards Association. It, was, it gives me distinct pleasure to visit this district especially the district of our past president, Mr. Jamie Devine. <laughs> Jamie was a great leader in South Carolina, as he, I know he is here in Richland, so we really appreciate everything that Jamie has done for us in the state of South Carolina. My name is Gail Hughes, and I have had the privilege of serving as your president of South Carolina School Board Association and Dorchester District 2 School Board Chairman. At this time, I would like for Commissioner Harris and the South Carolina School Board past president, Mr. Jamie Devine, to join me up front so we can do our presentation. So I'm gonna just make y'all laugh, I have on sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> We'd also like for Mr. Tim Dye, president of the 100 Black Men of Greater Columbia Incorporated to join us up front. Okay, okay, Ms. Mr. Keith Melvin. Mr. Melvin and the 100 Black Men of Greater Columbia Incorporated, we say thank you. Thank you for the wonderful partnership with Richland One. Your partnership deserves, or serves, I'm sorry, as a model for all other school districts in the state of South Carolina. South Carolina School Board Association is proud to recognize and honor you as our champions for public education and present you with this award. The Champions for Public Education Award is presented to businesses, nonprofit organizations, and individuals who greatly support public schools. Dr. Craig Witherspoon, Superintendent of Richland One Schools, nominated you for this award. He nominated you in honor of your tremendous support of the district's youth and your efforts to improve quality of life for those in this attendance zone. The work that you and the 100 black men of Greater Columbia Incorporated do is invaluable to the students in this district and your work does not go unnoticed. Let me tell you a little bit about this great partnership. More than 10 years ago, the 100 Black Men of Greater Columbia Incorporated began providing mentoring, financial economic literacy, and health and wellness education through the following Richland One programs, Lunch Buddies, Saturday Leadership Academy, and Coca-Cola Reach Back Pull Up. The Lunch Buddies program is held each month at Brooklyn Baptist Church. More than 150 middle and high school students from across the attendance zone of Richland One School District come together for lunch with the membership of the organization, which includes those of various professions. During lunch, the men share their life and professional experiences with the students, providing words of wisdom to help the, st the students realize their fullest potential. The 100 black men of Greater Columbia collaborated, collaborated with the Richland One Board of Commissioners and the district's administrative team to begin operation of the Saturday Leadership Academy, Academy program in 2010, providing middle and high school African-American males with positive role, role models. 
Since its inception, the program has logged more than 10,000 hours of instruction. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> this program now includes students from surrounding school districts as well and serves more than 1,350 students annually. So far, the Coca-Cola Reach Back pull-up events included a town hall focusing on inequity and social injustice, police and community relations and voter registration, and a dance contest. <laughs> Have to do something fun, right? <laughs> At the two events, nine $250 scholarships were awarded and computers, headphones, and other technology was given to contestant winners. On behalf of the South Carolina School Boards Association, I want you to know how much your efforts are appreciated. You are making a difference in the lives of Richland One students and families. And not only that, you're setting a major example for everyone else out there in the state of South Carolina that we need in our public education and systems and to partner with us. Thank you for being true champions and for reaching out and helping public school education. And again, congratulations. Thank you so much for those well-deserving acknowledgments. And now we're passing it back over to Chairwoman Harris. While well, Dr. Witherspoon is saying, uh, being seated, I just want to say again on behalf of the Richland One Board of Commissioners, we thank the 100 black men for all that you do to help us uh, make sure that our students have that additional support that, that we need. As I stated earlier the, today at our Richland One Champs press conference, we cannot do this by ourselves. And it's a blessing to have individuals that submit and render volunteer time, which means you're not looking for nothing in return, uh, to make sure that our students have every opportunity to be successful. So I appreciate all of you, and I thank you for being visual 
examples of what success looked like and what leadership looks like because our young people, they need it and they deserve it. And at no time will we ever say as a district we can do this by ourselves. We can't. But it's because of organizations such as yours that make us who we are on today. So, Dr. Whispoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, congratulations certainly to our, 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 our merit uh, um, finalists, and uh, we wish them well, uh, both as they finish out this school year and move on to their future endeavors. And certainly to echo your sentiments to um, 100 black men of greater Columbia, um, it is what, with all due thanks and, and appreciation what, what the organization does um, for young people. And, and, and as um, the president was reading, um, uh, certainly just, just some of the activities uh, that they were young people and, and folks in some other districts, hey, can we be a part of this? Mm -hmm. And, and um, as, as President uh, Melvin stated um, uh, as well, um, we, they do have some experiences and opportunities for, for young ladies too, uh, uh, as well. Have had opportunities certainly to participate, opportunities to, to go to Columbia High on, on, on Saturdays, uh, even during the pandemic, uh, and, and to see the engagement of young folks and, and also the parents. Uh, they had sessions for parents, sessions for our, 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 our young people, and they would continue to come. Uh, so again, with, with, with gratitude and appreciation for what the organization does. And nationally, uh, with, with, with 100 Black Men, mentoring is at the fore uh, of, of what the organization does. Uh, and, and as Chairwoman Harris said, it does make a difference. So know that your efforts are appreciated, are recognized, uh, by our young people in our community. So thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. And also to our students that are National Merit uh, finalists, uh, we, we, we salute them. Um, I mean, I know a lot of you, when they were announcing the 5.238s, <laughs> and I was sharing with a group yesterday, you know, some students that I was talking to that have these 5.0 GPAs, and I said, guys, I kid you not, I thought 4.0 was as high as you could go. When we were in school, Aaron and, and Angela here, but these young people, they are proof in the pudding of what happens in this district. And that is why it's so important to this board that we continue to celebrate our students that are making tremendous gains and going out into the world and representing us on much larger platforms. And at the end of the day, coming back and giving back, Dr. Witherspoon, to Richland, mm -hmm. one as many of them are already saying that they're going to do. Because um, one, it's a teacher cadet. I told him we got a job for him in Richland, one. Yeah, but we, we are very appreciative of our students and as all of our students that are doing uh, tremendously well. As many of you may know, our, our scholarship totals here in Richland, one are record breaking numbers. So you saw tonight some of those students that are making uh, our goals are reachable and attainable here in Richland One. Um, so thank you again for uh, my school board spotlight, Commissioner Clyburn and Commissioner Devine. We'll now move on to our memorial resolution. And let me just state as we go into this part, uh, because it, it's important that we celebrate our family, and that is Richland One. And tonight we are honoring four families that have lost their loved ones who were a part of this family. And as I, I read these resolutions to you on tonight, I just want you to know on behalf of this board that your loved one will always be a part of this district and you will always be a part of this district. And that's why these memorial resolutions are so important to the Board of Commissioners because we don't want you to feel that your loved one was just an employee. Mm -hmm. They were not just an employee, they were family. So at this time, we will pr present our memorial resolutions. We're gonna ask that the Board of Commissioners along with Dr. Witherspoon, that they will stand. I'm going to ask Commissioner, Vice Chairman Bishop, if you will come down to do the presentation, I'll read them in. We have members of the family of Dr. Wanda Smalls Price present, if you would come forward at this time. Thank you. In memoriam of Dr. Wanda Smalls Price, whereas Dr. Wanda Smalls Price was an assistant principal at Kaufman Road Elementary School in Richland County School District 1, 
and she previously worked as an assistant administrator at Metafield Elementary School. And whereas she departed this life on the 16th day of June in the year of 2022, and whereas she had been appointed to serve as principal at E.E. E. Taylor, which is the Edward E. Taylor Elementary School, prior to her passing. And whereas she gave four years of dedicated service to Richland One, and now therefore be it resolved by the members of the Richland One Board of Commissioners that the name of Dr. Wanda Smalls Price and the memory of her contributions not be forgotten. Further, that this resolution may be enrolled in the records of this institution and as an expression of sincere appreciation for her service, a copy be given to the family. And it is signed by yours truly, along with all the members of the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. The family of Dr. Vivian Snelling Brackett is present. Please come forward at this time. In memoriam of Dr. Vivian Snelling Brackett, whereas Dr. Vivian Snelling Brackett was a substitute teacher in Richland County School District 1, and she served at several schools, including Olympia Learning Center, Hopkins Elementary, Hand Middle, W.A. Perry Middle, and W.G. Sanders Middle School. And whereas she gave six years of dedicated service to Richland One, and whereas she departed this life on the 15th day of May in the year 2022, and now therefore be it resolved by the members of the Richland One Board of Commissioners that the name of Dr. Vivian Brackett and the memory of her contributions not be forgotten. Further, that this resolution may be enrolled in the records of this institution and as an expression of sincere appreciation for her service, a copy be given to her family. Thank you. We have members of Ms. Tracy Adams present, if you would come forward at this time. Mr. Tracy Adams, my apologies. In memoriam of Mr. Tracy Adams, whereas Mr. Tracy Adams was an instructional assistant at Burton Pack Elementary School in Richland County School District 1, and he previously worked at Alcorn Middle School, Lower Richland High School, Columbia High School, and Hayward Career and Technology Center. And whereas he gave 25 years of dedicated service to Richland One, and whereas he departed his life on the seventh day of November in the year 2022. And now therefore be it resolved by the members of the Richland One Board of Commissioners that the name Tracy Adams and the memory of his contributions not be forgotten. Further, that this resolution may be enrolled in the records of this institution and as an expression of sincere appreciation for his service, a copy be given to his family. And if we have members of Sing Q. Wilson, family present. In memoriam of Mr. Sing Q. Wilson. Whereas Mr. Sinq Wilson was a behavior interventionist in the RESET program at Hyatt Park Elementary School in Richland County School District 1. And whereas he also served as the head football coach and head track coach at Alcorn Middle School. And whereas he gave more than eight months of dedicated service to Richland 1. And whereas he departed 
this life on the 29th day of October in the year 2022. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the members of Richland One Board of Commissioners that the name Sin Q. Wilson and the memory of his contributions not be forgotten. Further, that this resolution may be enrolled in the records of this institution and as an expression of sincere appreciation for his service, a copy be given to his family. And at this time, I ask that all of you that are in the audience, if you will stand with me and give a round of applause to these four families that have served with them. Thank you, and you may be seated. At this time, we'll move on to 6.5 to our public participation. And this is where individuals have signed up for an agenda, non-agenda item. On tonight, we have no individual signed up. We will now move on to our consent agenda, which is one item, and that's 7.1, which is our December 13th, 2022 minutes. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers and second by Commissioner Devine. We will now open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Come on in. Come on in. All of y'all. Come on in. Y'all okay? Come on. Oh, our students, y'all can come in if y'all like. Let the record reflect that the 7.1 December 13th, 2022 minutes have been approved. Uh, the vote is six yeas and then one not present from Commissioner Bishop. We'll now move on to Office of Academics 8-1 with a presentation on dual enrollment, which will be presented by Ms. Van Jennings. Board Chair Harris, Dr. Witherspoon, Board of Commissioners, thank you for this opportunity to talk about dual enrollment in Richland 1. Dual enrollment is an opportunity for our high school students to take college level courses while they are still building their high school transcript. In South Carolina, students may take dual enrollment courses to, that would lead them towards a four year degree, a two year degree, or even a certificate um, if they get the credential that goes along with that certificate. Meaning that many of our students can graduate from high school with enough college credits to either go in as a second semester freshman, maybe a sophomore, saving students time, and definitely saving parents tuition fees. Amen. A three semester hour dual enrollment course transfers to one credit 
to one unit of credit for a high school, um, on a high school transcript. The courses must be taken as a part of an articulation agreement that the district has with the higher ed institution. And they also, our dual enrollment courses also provides one quality point above the CP courses that are provided for students. Over the last five years, Richland One has seen a steady increase in the number of students taking dual enrollment courses uh, in our district. And this has been a steady increase. Last year, the 21-22 school year, in Richland One, 696 courses, dual enrollment courses were taken, almost 700 courses by students in Richland One. <laughs> because this is such a great opportunity for our students, we also have a goal in our strategic plan that is specific to dual enrollment. And it states that by the 2024 school year, uh, the percentage of African American males will, the percent passing dual enrollment courses will increase. And that is specific to this subgroup of students. So let me repeat that. By the 2024 school year, the percentage of African American males will increase as far as the passage rate for the courses that they are taking, in du the dual enrollment courses they are taking. For 21-22, 73.6% of the African American males passed their dual enrollment classes. That equated, <laughs> that equated to 121 classes that were taken. Also, 70.2% had a grade of C or higher. At this time, we have several of our students who are currently enrolled in dual enrollment here. When they finish, they're going to come up and talk to you about their experiences with dual enrollment. And when they finish, we have a very short video of a student who has already graduated to give you some insight as to how dual enrollment supported her and her adventures and her endeavor after high school. Mm -hmm. So at this time, Dr. Kazar will have the students to come in. I'm going okay. to sit right here as they come up and introduce themselves and tell you which school and what dual enrollment has done for them. Awesome, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alila Wolf, and I am a senior at Drew High School. I was given the opportunity to take English 101 offered through Midland Technical College. We were given face-to-face -face instruction with a professor from Midlands Tech. Our professor continuously made aware of the resources and help available to help us succeed in any way possible. Having face-to-face -face interactions with a college professor really helped me understand the fundamentals of taking a college course and the rules and the rules and expectations associated with it. As a duly enrolled student, I am able to prepare my future and engage in college experiences while still in high school. Mm -hmm. All at a affordable price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dual enrollment also allows me to earn and transfer credits, which, could be, which can be applicable to other institutions. I like how the courses offered at Midlands directly connected me with my future career and interests. Upholding a college GPA and transcript motivated me to always do my best. In the past, I've taken business law, marketing, and medical terminology. These courses led me to explore my, co to explore colleges that aren't off at, that aren't offered at my school and gave me exposure to college level work while still in high school. Mm -hmm. I think my peers and I truly succeeded in this course because we were given the necessary resources and guidance, a, guidance to help us excel in every way possible. For juniors and other students like me, I would recommend registering in a duly enrolled program. It broadened me to think about my life beyond high school, grasping meaningful cost, concepts and making important steps towards guiding my future. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She can be seated. Oh, if she can be seated. Have a seat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get y'all in this room. <laughs> Hi.
Good evening. My name is Shannon Ray. I'm an early graduating senior attending North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in the fall. As a sophomore, last year, based off of my excellent academic record, I was able to sign up for um, a specific dual enrollment class in the spring of my sophomore year. Ever since I was a freshman, I knew that graduating early was something that I wanted to happen, so I signed up for various honors classes, AP classes, and dual enrollment classes with, Mid with, Mid with Midlands Technical College. This class was essentially a freshman 101 class. Our professor, Mr. Matt, gave us a book called Teach Yourself How to Learn by Sandra McGuire. That book changed my life. It altered my perception on what an A student is. Mm -hmm. I thought receiving A's were far more important than actually learning. This book and the assignments that we were given daily heavily talked about why it is important to build note-taking strategies that will, help me, that will help when classes become more rigorous in college and law school. This book single-handedly made me unlearn all of my toxic academic validated traits that I've learned while in middle school. If it was not for this class, I would not be the student slash person that I am today, and I would definitely not be graduating early. I strongly recommend that future high school students take this course. Awesome. What high school? What high school? I love you. Okay. Awesome. 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 Press my head to the camera. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I just want to say, before I introduce myself, I just want to say welcome and thank you to all, thank you to all, all the people that showed up tonight. I'm Jordan Cochran. I am a senior at Lower Richland High School. I am a dual enrollment student at Midlands Technical College. During these past four years, I have been fortunate to experience a, a lot and grow along with many of the activities within my school. As a student, I've been a participant of many sports, track, football, wrestling, and cross country. My entire time at Lower Richland, I've, my entire time at Lower Richland, I've served many different programs, but, the, but dual enrollment is definitely a life-changing program. At first glance, I saw this as an opportunity to get a head start with my courses in an in, in institution of higher learning. When I started the program, I realized that these classes required a great deal of more focus than I was willing to offer initially. <laughs> the classes were more challenging than my high school curriculum. I began to ask myself, why am I punishing myself? <laughs> <laughs> my senior year was supposed to be fun and easy. The only thing I was, was planning to manage this year was my senioritis. <laughs> I was experiencing a little frustration with a workload of high school work that I was already having. My parents always told me that school comes first. That's my job, and I only have one job. Mm -hmm. They would constantly remind me to take my education opportunities dead serious because no one can take what I've learned. Mm -hmm. the, ben the benefits of these, these sayings will definitely benefit me later on in life. I say anyone that is considering the program to take advantage of the free education because the cost of college is still rising. My family has explained to me on several occasions that they wish they could have the opportunity to earn college credits during high school. From my initial point of view, my peers was having fun and, and enjoying life. Well, on second glance, so was I. I slowly began and I slowly began to explain I slowly began to apply what my family had been explaining to me for years. I don't, to not procrastinate, to start early so I won't have to rush late. And with the supporting system of my parents, my family, my teachers, my, gui my guidance counselor, Dr. Darby, my coaches, Principal Williams, and especially Ms. Scott, I have come to understanding to take advantage of the opportunities that Dual Roman has gave me. Dual enrollment has taught me to become more responsible with time management discipline also as I start my journey into the next level. I feel great that some of the college course work I've completed it can count prior to my entry. I intend to go to a college majoring in electrical engineering and or computer science, maybe even both. As a senior, I'm also taking all honors classes in conjunction with passing all my dual enrollment classes. Being a part of dual enrollment has been a great opportunity for me to earn free college credits 
with the potential of transferring to all with the potential to with the potential to transfer to any university in the state of South Carolina it is a great opportunity to be a part of dual enrollment and I encourage anyone attending Lower Ridge Lynn to enroll the program my parents have reminded me is it would be great to attend college for free of charge that but that's still a work in progress. <laughs> I stand before you today and I can truly say I am grateful for the opportunities Lower Ridge High School has provided me and I will be the best to become a contributor of society. LR can be proud because nobody beats the creek. Thank you all. Great job, great job. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jamal Scarborough. I'm a senior at Lower Richland High School. Um, as, as a member of Lower Richland High School for four years, I've accomplished plenty of things, some too long to list in one. But one thing I've learned in this day and age of society and the internet is the importance of trying to get ahead. That's right. um, with dual enrollment, that's pretty much the name of the game. Dual enrollment, getting college credits early, um, and being able to experience that and actually finishing it, I finished in May of 2022 and graduated um, in the Colonial Life Arena, which was one of my best experiences ever to be on the court where I've seen plenty of basketball games and the zoo and different things, be able to graduate. Before I actually graduated high school, it was an amazing experience. But dual enrollment, it teaches you what you're going to see in the future. Um, there's plenty of things that college has that's different than high school. The teachers, the instructors, they're not even called teachers. They're professors. Everybody has a doctor to their title. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all the meetings, I took it during COVID, so all my meetings were on Zoom, but the, everything was completely different. It was a different atmosphere, and dual enrollment really prepares you for that. And to those teachers, I really thank them because they really give you insight of what you what to expect in the next four years of dual enrollment and that's, that's pretty much it thank you Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you guys for allowing us to be here today. Uh, my name is Jack Tobin, and my sister and I have been taking, have our seniors at AC4 High School, and have been taking dual enrollment classes since junior year. Uh, currently, well, so far, we have taken sociology, psychology, English 101, uh, music appreciation, uh, college Algebra, and uh, College 105. Wow. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so currently, I'm taking uh, Elementary Calculus. Uh, 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 art, Appreciation, and Oh yeah, public speaking. <laughs> uh, by the time I graduate in May, I would have completed, I would have received 30 college credits, which is a freshman year in college. Wow. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, so like my brother, um, last year and this past semester, I've completed the same classes. And this semester, I'm also taking elementary calculus, art appreciation, and um, what is it, English 102. Um, uh, taking these dual enrollment classes allow us to have our first year of college, or maybe even our first semester, second semester, um, with our teachers and our parents to support us while we transition into um, knowing what uh, college level work is like, what college life is like. I was an AP student my ninth, 10th, and 11th grade years of high school. 
um, while that was beneficial, uh, my dual enrollment classes allowed me to receive college credit without taking a huge test at the end of the year. That personally <laughs> makes me very stressful. Or it's very stressful for me. Um, and also through Midlands Tech, I am um, by the end of this year, I'll be a certified EMT. And that will allow me to get a jump start on my career as a medical professional. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. One. Wait a minute, there's a chair. Stay in the room, stay in the room. Chair. We don't get y'all very often, y'all stay in the room. <laughs> There we go. Um, good evening, Dr. Witherspoon, uh, Chairwoman Harris, and Board of Commissioners. My name is Ezazali Slater. I'm a 10th grader at CA Johnson High School. Um, as of now, I'm taking honors and gifted classes. Um, this year, I started taking dual enrollment courses. The reason I became excited about the opportunity is because dual enrollment adds lanes to a regular road, giving me and my peers greater opportunities at a young age as well as college level credits. Other than this program being affordable, it prepares us for the real world, Absolutely. showing us everything we want can be achieved through time and dedication. My goal when I graduate high school is to attend, Millions, uh, to attend Texas Tech and major in technology engineering. Although the road is more rugged and steeper than the straight and easy path, the end of the road is grand. Excellence awaits in the, future, in the near future. New enrollment is not only helping me be college ready, but career ready in my ultimate job choice. Um, thank you and good evening. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Anaya Hodges, and I attend the W.J. Keenan High School, the best high school in the nation, where I serve as a student body president, math honor society president, Delta Gems vice president, a member of the superintendent advisory council, and community service chair in Pearl. My, my experience in dual enrollment has been an intense learning process, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. The AP over instruction, Ms. Cheryl Lawson Wilson, and my counselor, Ms. Hassinger, has done a superb job in promoting dual, enro dual enrollment courses for their students and making sure that I know time management, the benefits of dual enrollment, and the rigor that comes with the courses. As I approached my junior year, my counselor made certain that I was enrolled into dual enrollment classes. As of now, I have completed seven dual enrollment classes with two in the progress, and I will take 21 credits with me into college. Overall, my experience into dual enrollment has been a pleasure. I have learned the importance of time management, how to balance my number of classes with extracurricular activities, and as a commissioner of higher education, college process ambassador, I have been able to begin my higher education process as of right now with the W.J. Keenan High School <laughs> and promote kids this process that are younger than me. Furthermore, as I reflect on a message from Principal Whaley, Keenan has been exemplary in providing a wealth of resources that I might grow to be a productive citizen and compete in a global society. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Good evening, my name is Kristen Coleman, and I am a senior also at the W.J. Keenan High School. And I am involved in several organizations and currently serve as the president of National Honor Society, student body treasurer, a pearl leader, Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society tutoring coordinator, and I'm a member of the cheerleading squad. Dual enrollment at W.J. Keenan has played a pivotal role in preparing me for college. The classes are taught at a college level, but available to us on our high school campus. Mm -hmm. With my college level courses, which are far more different than my high school level courses, there is always an assignment due, studying is not an option, and there is homework every night. Mm -hmm. I had to work hard to stay on top of each course that I'm taking. In addition to adjusting to the work load and learning at a fast pace, I had to learn to contact my professors about grades because on the college level, there are no progress or interim reports. Due to, 
Due to the pandemic, all of my courses were virtual. Virtual classes come with its pros and its cons. I had to learn to adjust my communication habits with my professors. For example, our major source of communication was via email. This was different for me because I was accustomed to walking up to my teacher's desk when I needed support. This communication style also taught me patience because if the matter was urgent to me, there was no guarantee it would be resolved as quickly as it would be in a classroom. Now I feel more prepared if I have classes that will be taught virtually. During my time at Keenan, I have taken six dual enrollment courses. The benefit of this is that I have earned six credits on the high school level, but I'm also excited to say that I will be taking 18 credit hours with me to college. Each of these credits will allow me to enter school as a second semester freshman. Although it was challenging, I do not regret my time as a dual enrollment student and feel prepared for the road ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to share my experience. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Jeffrey Argueta. I am a junior at currently enrolled at Oakland High School. All right. All right. Um, I am the junior class president as well, and I am a cheerleader, and I'm also part of the band, <laughs> of the No Half Stepping Marching Band, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm also part of the um, Beta Club and the Agriculture Club, and I'm a dual enrollment student as well. Um, honestly, coming into high school, I wanted to take AP courses, but my school didn't offer that much, to be real. But I'm glad that I was able to take dual enrollment courses because of the teachers I met. Honestly, I can't explain how like comfortable I was able to talk to my teachers. The relationship I was able to make with a specific teacher, like I don't want to like name call, like everyone else did to be real. <laughs> um, but it was this one course and I took her twice actually, for two courses and she was really flexible with me. And I, was, I needed to be able to communicate with her too as well as like everyone else like mentioned. I procrastinate a lot to be real and it's, it's a bad habit of mine. <laughs> but she, she, and everyone had talked about how rigorous a course was but for me, the course was not rigorous. It was more of a challenge of time. Con you know, mm -hmm. I had a lot of going to my play, and I just never had time management skills. It was just a bad experience, in my opinion, and bad first. But now I have taken psychology, sociology, English 101, English 102, music appreciation. Um, currently taking on public speaking, hopefully a math course and a history course. But I think as I progressed forward in the Dola Roma course, I needed to learn time management skills. And I'm, I think now, with the addition of an AP course like that I have on my plate, I've learned time management skills. <laughs> <laughs> there were like so many times where I thought, like, oh, I'm going to fill this course. But let's be real, I didn't. So thank God. <laughs> but yeah, I just, in general, I just really want to like, thank Dola Roma and everyone else who gave me the opportunity to take this course as my guidance counselors. And yeah. Awesome. Good. Ms. Jennings? Okay. Video. Yeah, class of 2020. It's the creep. My name is Ariana Yuli. I attended Lawrenceville High School and graduated in 2021. I currently attend Clemson University, majoring in secondary education and history. In completing the program, I earned 33 credit hours through Millis Tech. This allowed me to enter college as a sophomore, and this also prepared me for what college would be like in the future. The rigor was a lot harder than what I was used to, but I do believe that helped me not only in the classes with Midlands Tech, but also with my classes at Laura Richland. I was able to learn how to study better and also time management, and also be more prepared for what was to come in the future and currently. I would say if you are thinking about doing the Let's Take the Long Run program that the district offers, you should definitely do it. It is an amazing opportunity. We got the opportunity to walk in the Let's Take uh, graduation, and that was just something that was really prideful in itself. And this also shows you that like you are at a school and in a district that truly cares about your academic as well as your personal success well beyond your years of being here. 
So I feel like it is an amazing opportunity to help you grow and flourish and be more prepared for your future. Since the end of our presentation, we probably have, I know we have some parents that are here in the audience as well as principals. Mm -hmm. So if your parents, if, you, uh, if you're a parent of one of these students that are here tonight, please stand. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And principals, would you please yeah. wave and stand? Uh -huh. yeah. 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 So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much um, to you, Ms. Jennings, for this presentation. I want to say to this board and to Dr. Witherspoon, this is the fruit of the labor. When we embarked upon this journey, and I say this to our parents, to do dual enrollment in schools that had AP and IB and all these other programs, Dr. Witherspoon said, we can never have too many pathways for our children to be successful. And I remember when we first started, Aaron, with dual enrollment, the numbers were rather small. Mm -hmm. But the story started getting out. I sit here today as a parent of a child, parents, that was dual enrolled. She graduated with that young lady you just saw, Ariana. She went into her school as a sophomore. On Monday, she started her junior year after just graduating in 21. She was accepted. Let me tell you, parents, the ball is in your court. Your child right now, every college wants your kid. I'm proof. My daughter was accepted into 44 schools across the country, $880,000 in scholarship offerings. And we use that to bargain, young people, <laughs> To get that full ride, mm -hmm. she gets money from everywhere. My daughter has a housekeeper mm -hmm. that comes in on Tuesdays and Thursdays and changes out her sheets and her linens and cleans her bathroom. When she went to college, of course, she didn't go to the freshman dorm parents. She's in the junior dorm now. You're hearing what I'm saying? So they, there's a lot of privileges to your child being dual enrolled. But to see my daughter, and I, I thank you, Dr. Witherspoon. I thank your staff to see my daughter, to my colleagues, graduate from college a week and a half before graduating from Laura Richland, that's unheard of. But you young people, Mr. Jordan there, my little neighbor, mm -hmm. continue to do what you're doing. We're watching you and we are cheering you on. The world is yours for the taking. Right now, colleges want you because you've already proven that you can handle college rigor while you're in high school. That's major. And it's tough. I asked Ebony when I took her back on Sunday, I said, what would you want me to say? We're gonna talk about dual enrollment. She said, tell those young people, whatever you do, don't give up. You can do whatever, you can change the world. She is constantly giving her testimony, guys, in class. You went to what district? You went to what school? and you're only 19 years old, you've got a powerful future ahead of you. So take advantage of, I am beyond proud of every last one of you and all the other students that's involved in this pro. I'm proud of this district for embarking. I'm proud of, I thank Dr. Raines. Yes. I thank Dr. Raines, the president of Midlands Technical College for being determined to get that program here. And Dr. Wilson, if I'm not mistaken, Richland One graduates more dual enrolled students than any other schools or districts in the Midlands. And that's Richland and Lexington, right here. So you, that's right, you can clap, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna open the floor at this time because we don't get you all here very often. And you're all about to leave us. And we have high expectations for you. Make us proud. Continue to make us proud. You got a year, in, oh, you're a sophomore, so you're just getting started. Well, you'll probably have two associates by the time you're done, <laughs> okay? But we are proud of you. I'm gonna open the floor at this time with our board because it's important that we pour into you, the Richland One family way. We got your back. We're rooting for you. Parents, we're rooting for you. It's gonna be hard when they leave, trust me, oh God. No. It's gonna be hard, but you'll get over it, Mom. 
you know. But but I'm, I'm telling you, it's an experience of a lifetime to see these children successful and and living out their dreams and their goals. It's major. So any board member at this time have anything for our students or our parents? Commissioner Clyburn. So thank you all and congratulations on the track that you all are on. So I just wanted to commend you on that. Um, so a few of you mentioned in your, um, your remarks that you know, you, you weren't sure if you're going to make it through. You know, you know how challenging you know the program is, and all of that you were going through. So, any one of you can um, answer this question. I just wanted to know what what are a few things that kept you going. You know, just so you can speak for. Yes, go ahead. Do we have? Your mom and your guidance counselor. Okay. Okay. And your dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. She was patient. <laughs> That's good. Okay, thank you. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Commissioner Bishop. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to these students, and definitely to your parents, and to you, um, leaders in education throughout the district, job well done. And, um, you know, when I took this position as a uh, board member, I took my hand and put it on the Bible and raise the other one to God to make sure I defend this type of opportunity. And I want you to know that this is worth fighting for. But we can't fight it by ourselves. I want you to become champions in this fight. That you know the value of what this offers to you. And if you ever see us in a battle to keep this coming, I mean keep this going, don't let us fight by ourselves. The same podium will be available to you anytime you see this bridge being broken. Mm -hmm. Many times people think education is a bridge to nowhere. I would go to church, but I would just say that's, <laughs> I'd be very professional. I think that's a lie. You have proven to us tonight that you are crossing a bridge. Not any kind of bridge, but a transformational bridge. Something that can change your life forever because uh, college readiness and getting a head start towards your dreams and your goals is one of the best opportunities you can ever have. Because not only are you saving time, but you also are saving money. And those are two of the greatest. That's right. Clap it up. <laughs> it, those are two of the greatest commodities in our time besides love, patience, and anything else that you want to value, especially family. So again, as a board of commissioners, this is nothing that we um, get, get very wealthy from, but the day you made me feel rich. You made me feel wealthy. You made me feel um, like this is valuable. So to all you all, especially that guy, that guy I'm going to call him out if you don't mind. That boy there is one of the baddest baseball players I ever seen. <laughs> um, and see, that's just one. That, we hear stories here, but you know, he's a student athlete. Who, anyone else a student athlete? Wow, all, look, of all of them. Wow. Man, yeah. to 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 have that type of balance. <laughs> I was a college student athlete, and you are a leader now. 
I'll, I'll quote, and the reason why we are existing says, we are Richland One, a leader at transforming lives through education. The only way we are the leaders is because you're leading from the front. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Myers. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to keep it very short and sweet. Um, just do the board a favor and go back and reach back and pick up someone else. Go to your school and, and educate someone else about the program. Um, if there's false information out there, y'all, just educate them on the positive part of it. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is gone. Mm -hmm. And for the youth that coming up, pull, pull someone up. Just pull up one more person. If you could do anything else, just pull up the next person. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Devine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, again, kudos to each of you, and thank you so much for what you do to our parents. Thank you for sending us your most precious commodity, and that's the young people, so that we can uh, transform their lives, so they can become uh, global citizens in, in today's society. Um, a few questions for staff. Um, can, do we know when this uh, dual enrollment um, started, approximately? I, I got back 2016. I believe is the memo that I pulled up yeah. around 2016, 2017. So at some point, can we get like historical perspective of the number of graduates we had over the years, just to see where we are? And you know my uh, my my famous question: How does this align with the strategic plan? <laughs> First of all, uh, uh, Commissioner Devine, we will we will get that information for you, and um, this is directly in line with our strategic plan um, as, uh, again, if we talk about those mm -hmm. academic goals, those graduation goals, um, college and career readiness, um, but as, as you have all said about, and we talk about in this district a lot, options and opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for, for our young people. And, 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 and what this speaks to, I lean over to, to, to the chair, what this speaks to is there's not one way to, to success. Uh, there, there are multiple avenues, and our job, and I appreciate this board, is where we need to provide options and opportunities. Um, you, you, you challenge this administration, ask this administration to go and and, and and do that, and and this is the fruit of this. And these students represent again. This is a small fraction of the number Correct. Uh, that we have. Uh, so you 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 take the students that are here this evening, and and and, and multiply that by. Um, you know, almost hundreds, um, but um, it, it does align uh, with our with our plan. Um, uh, and 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 if you know notice, you know when we had the the work session right right before the holidays, there was a slide that that we shared that that spoke to to uh, again. Uh, let's be clear, we want options and opportunities for all of the students in Richland One, mm -hmm. all as we say on this board, say in this district, all means all. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and and oh. we stand by that. Uh, but all also means providing those various pathways for all and letting all be able to determine their path forward. And, and that's how that connection um, works. So uh, as, as, as has been stated, we will get that information for you. Uh, but but we have heard the challenge uh, certainly from this board to to increase those numbers. We um, um, Ms. Jennings gave some some pass rate information and so forth, and and just as we do with graduating and, and others, we want more students participating because of the benefit. Uh, but we need even more students again being have those supports in place, mm -hmm. be it through school administration counselors, certain their parents, uh, uh, fellow students but making sure that those supports are in place uh, so that not only they can sign up for the courses, take those courses, and be successful. So we will continue to do that. And I just want to say, Madam Chair and Commissioner Vat, on that, congratulations to these students and, and er, all of our students that have participated in dual enrollment uh, and, and, and have gone on but are in the pipeline and in the pathway now. And uh, Ms. Tobin, I know you, know, you, you came. We had a meeting uh, a couple of months ago and um, took that to heart. We are continuing to open up the, the pathways and work with our school administrators and so forth about making sure that, we, you know, again, any student, every student uh, that see this as a, as, a, as a pathway, we're providing that opportunity. So that is continuing to happen. Um, uh, good to see you here uh, uh, this evening. 
uh, uh, as well. But just know that that as you see here, a charge from the district, from the from this board, and and, and a charge that this administration does take very seriously. Commissioner so, Devine. So thank you. So that was the first part. So the second part, and I'm just summarizing what I heard, um, competitive advantage, mm -hmm. economic advantage, options and opportunities for all students, and align with our strategic plan. And what I heard from the young people was reasons why dual enrollment is important. You all have higher grades. Right. You all are exposed to college level instruction. Mm -hmm. You all get, have better Pre better prepared for succession in college, mm -hmm. better success in college, and then rigor for college coursework. And this goes back as policymakers to policy JFB when we talk about school choice. Right. Here are some other options That's and opportunities right. within this school district. That's right. Within this school district. Mm -hmm. And we hear the word choice being used a lot in this arena. We have mm -hmm. school choice within Richmond School yeah. District 1. Right. Here's a great school choice for our young people. Yeah. We have to make sure that we allow the administration to do its job to open up more schedules for our young people mm -hmm. to take right. these dual enrollment courses. Right. So I challenge the administration mm -hmm. to increase that number as we go over the board and superintendent goals, and I know that that's part of, part of that. So again, as we look at these school choices uh, for our young people, let's continue to increase that let's inc and, and, and get as many young people as we can when it comes to having that competitive advantage because we want all of our young people to be successful. Right. Because at some point, we're going to all be gone. And guess what? Somebody from this audience yeah. is going to be in our seats. That's right. mm -hmm. So this is not about us. It's about tomorrow. That's right. It's about the future. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. At this time, before you leave, we're going to ask that all of our dual enrolled students, if, if you would come up front, the board come in. We're going to do a picture with you all because we want to make sure one of the things that we hear over and over again is communicate this stuff so we know it's out there. So we want to tell the story. But who better to tell the story than your faces as proof that dual enrollment works? So we're going to ask all of you if you will come up at this time. Um, we'll ask the board, Dr. Whispoon, if you'll go down. Jennings, are there any principals here? We'll ask the board to jump in this picture right quick. I'm going to stay back. I'm going to probably do two rows. We, we may need two rows. Right? The board can well, stay, can back, stay here. back here. Can yeah. the board stay back here like yes. we normally do? Okay. Oh, okay. Y'all are good. We're going to stay back. We'll stay back. <laughs> can they see you? Yes. Okay. Oh, All right. Oh, <laughs> All our principals? Over here. I see Sarah right. over here. I see Johnson over here. Okay. Yeah. Keys on. People on the far edges, y'all don't need to come in. Come on. Scoot in. Come on. All those people still need to be on the middle row because the board's already kind of elevated. So who's tall? Yeah, the teacher's tall. Some of the teachers need to be. Come on, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. There you go. Put a few chairs there. Have to get inside this box right here. Okay. Some chairs there. About right here. To, yeah. So double up. So then you may have to go. Madam Chair, I have a. Madam Chair, fine. Okay, they got chairs. They got chairs. Yeah, y'all sit. Come on, girl. That works. That works. That works. That works. That works. There you go. Come on over, young people. On Tobin. This is just a small percentage. This is awesome. We good kids. Yeah, that's what I want to keep. Yeah, you need to be in there. Yeah. Yeah, really? <laughs> I 
I know that's real. That's right. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Long day. My parents. Picture pictures. Oh yeah, I never seen her. Oh, 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 oh. Can we give a round of applause to our young people? And thank you as well to all of our principals that are here with us on tonight. There is a meeting in session. Commissioner Clapper. <laughs> Thank you again to all of our parents for joining us on tonight as well. We appreciate you. Thank you. At this time, we will move forward with our agenda again. Dr. Witherspoon, thank you so very much for that amazing presentation of our dual enrollment program. We will now move on to our 8.2, which is JAG, which is our Jobs for America's Graduates uh, by Dr. Prince. Chairwoman Harris, Board of School Commissioners, Dr. Witherspoon, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. In a, a November board meeting, you approved the renewal of the JAG agreement, which is Jobs for America's Graduate Program at C.A. Johnson High School. This evening, the administration is recommending approval of a memorandum of agreement to expand the JAG program to all district high schools, including the Richland One Middle College, with the City of Columbia sharing the cost along with the state. At this time, the administration is recommending the approval of the Memorandum of Understanding to expand JAG to all district high schools, including Richland One Middle College. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers and second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous and the JAG Jobs for America's graduates expansion has been approved. Thank you so much, Dr. Prince. And, and to this board, that deserves a round of applause. That's major. We certainly want, and Dr. Witherspoon, we, if, we will send a letter on behalf of this board and the district to Mayor Rickerman and the members of city council, as well as to Governor McMaster, thank you for helping us to pay for Jack across the district. We are greatly appreciative of that. And thank you to this board for approving that agreement. We'll now move on to the Office of Operations with 9-1, which is a contract for new laptop computers. And that is Ms. Outing. Good evening. Let me first say by my heart is full for all of those students. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to yeah. see all of that happening between the students of the AC floor and Dreer and all the other students of the dual enrollment because mm -hmm. we have kids that did the same thing or went through that same path wow. through the AB or the wow. 
IB program, and we are extremely proud of all of our Richland That's One right. students. Excellent, excellent. So my heart is full. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Witherspoon, the administration is requesting approval to award a contract to Dell Inc. to provide new laptop computers. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bishop and second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Commissioner Devine. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Just um, this funding is coming from what source? They, this will be paid for from the bonds that we sell in the spring, All right. as we do every year. And this is part of the ongoing, um, ongoing replacement. laptop replacement. Mm -hmm. As we've discussed in the past, and this is just continuation of, of that. That's right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? Seeing none here and none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The new laptop computers have been approved as previously stated in 9.1. We'll now move to 9.2, which is a contract for the reading book collections. Ms. Outing. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Witherspoon, the administration is requesting approval to award a contract to Book Source to provide reading book collections, classroom last libraries. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers and second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Commissioner Weston. Uh, good afternoon. My question is, were teachers allowed to talk about or see what book selections or what company? Dr. Hagwood. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Upon approval uh, by the board, uh, each teacher will receive a link and they will be able to select their own collection based on what they need in their classrooms. Okay, and this was the only company that they could do that with? Um, this was the company that allowed them to have the most um, access to the most, um, the, the different number of titles and the different collections. So um, some of the companies prepackaged the selections and there was a mixture of books in them but what we've found is that teachers um, who have a wide variety of uh, texts in their classrooms already they're missing specific types of books so I'm missing books that are about stem or I need more nonfiction books or I need higher levels or lower levels and so with this company they'll be able to choose it based on those specific needs rather than getting just a random selection of books thank you ma'am you're welcome okay Commissioner Lomanet Thank you, Chairman Harris. Mm -hmm. um, is it 100 books in each collection? Um, there are approximately, yes, 100 books in mm -hmm. each collection, <clears throat> yes. The, um, that is the smaller selection. So if you're a first year through third year teacher, you have the opportunity to choose a bigger selection or collection because you probably have a limited number of books. So, so those teachers can get more books to build up their library more quickly? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Chairman Harris. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Hagwood. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Okay. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll call for the... I'm sorry. Who? That's what I was, I was, I'm sorry. I should have said that. Oh, you put your hand up. Okay. Commissioner Devine, you will recognize. Thank you. Just quickly, uh, I, I know we discussed this in our committee. Uh, I just forgot. When do we anticipate getting the product? Um... Upon approval, um, once the teachers make the selections, um, the company feel as though they can start shipping within a couple of weeks, depending on, um, you know, how fast we get our orders in. So uh, it kind of depends on us, but we're ready to push send as soon as we receive approval okay. in a purchase Thank order. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank awesome. you, Dr. Hagwood. Any additional questions? Okay. We'll call for the vote.
Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The contract for the reading book collections, 9.2, has been approved. Thank you so much, Dr. Hagwood, and thank you so much, Ms. Alden. We'll now move to 10, which is the Office of Human Resources. And we will begin with 10.1, which is employee suspension without pay. Dr. Long. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and Dr. Witherspoon. Pursuant to Section 59-25-450 of the South Carolina Code of Laws, the administration recommends that the employee with the initials <coughs> B-A, employment suspended without pay for two days. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. It's been moved by Commissioner Clyburn and second by Commissioner Myers. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect six yeas and one nay. Uh, this has been approved uh, for the employee suspension without pay. We'll move on now to 10.2, uh, which has been scratched. We'll move down now to 10.3, which is administrative hire. Dr. Long. The administration recommends hiring Bryant Robinson for the position of assistant principal at Eau Claire High School for the 22-23 academic year. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner... Myers and second by Commissioner Clyburn. We'll now open the floor for question and discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The administrative hiring stated in 10-3 has been approved. We now move to 10-4, which is the leave of absence. The administration recommends the approval for the leave of absence without pay for the employee with the initials CV. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. <clears throat> Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The leave of absence without pay, as stated in 10-4, has been approved. 10-5, hiring of personnel. The administration recommends hiring the teachers on the attached list for the 2022-2023 academic year. The administration so recommends. Heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Clyburn. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The hiring of personnel as stated in 10-5 has been approved. Thank you so much, Dr. Long. You're welcome. We'll now move on to the office of the board. We have 11-1, which is a parent request to be heard. Good evening, Chairwoman Harris, Good Board e of School Commissioners, and Dr. Witherspoon. The administration recommends the Board of School Commissioners not hear the appeal on behalf of the student with the initials M. B. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for Met approval. No. Commissioner Javine. Mm -hmm. So her motion died for lack of a second. Yeah. Your motion died for lack of a second. Commissioner Devine. Madam Chair, I move that the board hears the um, parent um, request uh, to be heard uh, as presented in executive session. Second. 
there's a motion on the floor for the board to hear the parent request as discussed in executive session. It's been properly seconded by Commissioner Bishop. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. And let me explain the vote. A yay vote means the board will hear. A nay vote means we will not hear. Seeing no question or no discussion, we will now call for the vote. And at the appropriate time, we will clean up that question um, because the question, we, we had a substitute motion and it is uh, unanimous for us to hear the parent request to be heard. So we will just change the question. If we can get Commissioner Devine to get the question to Ms. Eva, it was a substitute motion to hear the parent's request. And the vote is unanimous. So thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. Uh, we will now move on to 11-2, which is a legal status report in regards to the Miramonte versus Richland County School District 1 case. This was an information item. Uh, we will open the floor for any question or discussion. Com Commissioner Lomanet. Um, I need to recuse myself if there is going to be any uh, discussion right. because of an ongoing professional relationship with someone who works for the law firm representing the respondent. If there's not going to be a relationship, then I'll uh, right. That's discussion, what, then I'll stay. Any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. This is an information item. Thank you. We'll move on. Thank you so much, Commissioner Lomanet. We'll now move on to 11-3, uh, which is um, our 2022-23 Board Superintendent and District Goals presented by, ooh, by me. Okay. As, as the Board recalls prior to the winter break, we had a work session to discuss our Board Superintendent and District Goals. And on tonight, uh, we have them before us, so we do need a motion to approve. Uh, those and, and to move forward from there with discussion if we get to that point. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the Board Superintendent District Goals uh, for dated January 10th, 2023. Second. Okay. There is a request to approve the goals for the Board Superintendent and District Goals. It's been properly seconded by Commissioner Bishop. We'll now open the floor for question and discussion. Commissioner Weston. Um, yes. My concern was that we don't have any measurable goals. Is there a reason for that? Dr. Wispon, can you respond? Um, those goals are outlined in the strategic plan. You know, we went over some of those um, uh, goals back at the work session uh, that carried out through 2024. Uh, but in between in those, those times, uh, what's presented to the board periodically through work sessions and other uh, information is some current status where current where we stand currently on on a particular item and then where we end up at a particular date so that that information is indeed um, shared with the board is it possible like for item seven if you're looking at the students who were here and talking about dual enrollment mm -hmm. is it possible to say by 10 percent by 50%, something of that nature, so we'll have something to measure. We can do that. The, the issue becomes um, two-pronged. Two, two when and what are we starting from? It's January. So if we, if we were to say in, in this, X percent or X percentage points, is that by June of this year? when, again, we've already started second semester, is that going to be June of next year, and so forth. That's why we, when we bring these to you as either status reports or, or what that end date is, we do have those starting points where we measure. Um, but to say, um, you know, by the end of this year, again, and, and here, here we are January 10th, starting from there, there's we would see what's in the pipeline right now. But to say, okay, 10% or, or five points by June 23, um, that would be different than June 24 because that's already 
there, we're in the pipeline already. So it, it would depend. But when, you, when we bring these measures to you, they indicate a starting point and then a finish point. So is it possible mm -hmm. to do that by date so that we will know if we've reached that goal? That's, we take a, yes, short answer, yes. 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 That's okay. embedded in that, in the strategic plan and in those goals that we talked about. If you recall um, at the last meeting, some we might need to adjust some of those goals because of COVID and some other things. So some of those will be adjusted. But short answer, yes, there is a way to quantify. Okay, if we could quantify yeah. it, I think that would let us know if we met it mm -hmm. or exceeded it or didn't meet it. Sure. Okay. In addition, Commissioner Myers? Um, just for clarification, <clears throat> looking at so many goals, and I see increase, decrease, um, it's no percent, it's no 10%, 5%. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the clarification of, and I know we do get the reports on it throughout the year, but I think that would be clarification when they're reading it. And we, had like and we can do that. Okay, great. And let me um, clarify this too, because when we brought this to the board, th these are goals that we are, that's a part of our strategic plan too. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know, let's not get, even though they're all goals, this is not connected as to the goals the superintendent sets for his evaluation, where we get the numbers and et cetera. Yeah. This, is, this is the board reviewing the strategic plan, and there are some adjustments, as Dr. Woodsman talked about. Because of COVID, there were some things we had in there where we talked about AAP and things like that, but then there are some things we've got to now tweak in the strategic plan as it relates to coming out of COVID, getting the young people back on track and those. So these goals are a part of that. We're looking at the bigger picture too, which is the strategic plan for the entire district. If you look at taking strategic action to increase this, that, and the other, that's connected to the overall strategic plan of the entire district. That's why it's not labeled as the superintendent's goals. It's the board, superintendent, and district. This is the entire, all of us working together to move from out of COVID. So I just wanted to clarify that when we when we put this on the agenda for the work session, it was that, as, as Commissioner Devine had mentioned, there were some goals in the strategic plan we needed to look at because they weren't aligned back to the strategic plan coming out of COVID. We knew we got to bring, we've got to bring the kids up when it comes to this and it comes to that. So that's why those items were pulled out in particular. So I just wanted to clarify that as to why we brought them as board superintendent and district goals. Thank this is right. This is the you line for to the, the You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? C Commissioner Lomanac? Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. You know, when we evaluated the superintendent, these were, I mean, these appear to be similar, if not the same goals. And I pointed out at the time that while I know I can look at the <coughs> appendix that was attached with a lot of the performance data, this was the goal we were evaluating. And I said at the time, take strategic actions is not measurable in any sense of the word. Uh, and we would never tell our, this isn't something that we would use for our teachers or our schools, and we don't. In fact, uh, on December 16th, what we told our schools is that in a year and a half, we want 90% career college ready. And I've gotten an earful from teachers, because we're at 55% right now. And what they're saying is, what's the roadmap to increase almost double in two years. And for these goals, I feel like we should be setting some percentages uh, and breaking down what do we want our t teacher turnover rate to be. And I agree, we have to be realistic. I mean, measurable goals are important, realistic goals are important. I I'm concerned that that 90% goal may be so unrealistic that it's actually disheartening to, to the folks at the schools. So I, I, e even though I want us to have lofty goals, but here, too, I think we should have some numbers attached to these so that in the fall, in November or December, when we sit down to evaluate uh, the superintendent, we've got uh, some number attached to these. The other point I wanted to make is that when we talk about, for example, teacher turnover, a lot of times we're measuring the district as a whole, totally important but also important for equity purposes that we ensure that we're not allowing some schools who are doing really well to uh, gloss over some schools that need more support. So I'd like us to tie a district-wide teacher turnover number, but also something like we don't want any school, any single school to have more than blank percentage of teacher turnover. 
And that number is going to be higher than what we want the, the district goal to be. But if we talk about equity, I want to make sure that we are assigning some uh, individual school numbers so that when we see a school go out of line with that, that really is flagged for us as a board, and we start asking those, those questions. And I think that would be appropriate for, this, for, for our district goals as well. Okay, and, and again, to you, Commissioner Lomanat, this is, the, this is connected to our strategic plan. And, and I think we are getting confused, the difference. I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying, um, but the strategic plan is where we list the strategies in which we're going to take. And as you would click on each one, it would show what those strategies are. For instance, if it's to increase dual enrollment. When you looked at, look at the strategic plan, it would show, and I recall Dr. Woodspoon sharing as we went through these items, how we would move the dual enrollment. I think that with scheduling was an issue. So there were things that he talked about that, that needed to be done there. So I think we're getting the superintendent's goals that we use to evaluate the performance confused with the overall strategic plan. The district has a five-year strategic plan. This is, these are those goals that we had to go back. Commissioner Devine brought up that we needed to go back and look at the strategic plan of the district that we are required to have and to make sure that those strategic goals are aligned like they need to be coming out of COVID because we know we took a bite just as any other school district in the country because of COVID. So I think we're, we're, we're kind of getting two different sets of goals confused. Dr. Whispoon, we can take this up with the numbers for your goals to bring that back to the board. These are the district goals as it relates to the strategic plan. That's why every last one of them are saying take strategic actions too. And if you remember in the work session, he went into detail explaining how we would take each individual strategic action. So I just wanted to, I wanted to clarify that again. Commissioner Bishop. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going, that last part. So the key word in all of this is actions, mm -hmm. plural. And if you break down each and every one of those, actions mean these are the objectives up under each number, on number one, right? Mm -hmm. These are the objectives on number two. And I think that's, that's, that's critical, Dr. Witherspoon, because we, we know that each one of those objectives help each one of those items. So item one is supported by maybe two or three actions three actions, seven actions. We're talking about a district here. Mm -hmm. And so it may be um, you got to do over here at uh, Lower Richland Branch or uh, Keenan's Cluster, so much to do to get these actions accomplished. Right. My question to Dr. Witherspoon and even the chairwoman, I think we, we, we need to have those mile mark meetings. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes we wait to the end of the road right. to see if we made it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Witherspoon, uh, when will we have that that first mile marker meeting to let us know we headed that direction, or you yeah, may need yeah. to shift and yield, or uh, increase or decrease uh, resources, opportunities, and options? What what does that meeting look like? And are we going? We, what I want to make sure is is very evident that we're not waiting to you to your evaluation right. period to see if we're making these, right? When, when will that next meeting happen? We look at that in, in March, I, I think it's the March. chair, we, and we, we started this prior to COVID, mm -hmm. and then COVID happened and that changed a lot of things. Yes. With, with yes. Um, the, the retreats and those yes. things that, um, um, that we would have where there would be these updates. Yes. Um, either in number, of, of, of you know where we start and where we are but I think we also have to be mindful too when we start mm -hmm. these and again if we say and, and we can bring these back no no problem to say if, if depending on the goal if we're saying okay what's the stop point is that by Again, the end of this academic year, depending on some of these, is it by the end or midpoint of next academic year? Um, because again, a, a lot of things, and as you've heard in the, in the, in the presentation this evening, uh, to, to one of these goals, you know, there are things in, in, in place in terms of, if we're talking about a, a schedule change, 
or as, as Commissioner Vine says a lot, okay, how much is this going to cost? Is it a budget implication? So if it's a budget implication, uh, depending on what degree, that might can't happen until the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. That, and then if it's a budget implication, say, tied to personnel, if you will, the budget has to be passed, folks have to be hired, then you put things in place, so there's a connection to a lot of these, um, these things. And, and, and I just want to emphasize the same uh, as, as the chair and others had said, um, you know, as these are the district's goals. Not in, in, because when, as the board approved these, they cascade yeah, that's right. up and down the organization. I think as, as Commissioner Lomanak just said, hey, that 90%, uh, is that attainable? And and just as we talked about in in February in 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 December, uh, with Commissioner Devine, hey, there needs to be a, some adjustments mm -hmm. to some of those, and that was the next step. And I think the chair indicated that in December, the next step is, as we look at our strategic plan, some of those those goals, uh, those 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 targets or goal and, and number wise. They need to be adjusted. We all agree with that. So we've, we're looking at that. But again, as we, as we say by when, some of it is going to depend. Uh, and if we, and, and we have no problem, Commissioner Weston, you know, setting a date certain, but that's going to that's gonna change some other variables, uh, if you will. But we have no problem coming back and from here to here, such, such date, and, but those dates may vary or the numbers may be adjusted accordingly, if, if you will. So, and, and let me just say this right quick before you do your last statement. So to, the, to my colleagues, this is what we want to do. Let's address the strategic plan goals tonight. Dr. Willis-Woon, I'm going to ask of you on behalf of the board that by the 24th meeting, well, committees that start next week, to come back with your goals, with the measurables in those things that can be measurable, such as dual enrollment, et cetera, so that they can see those, okay? And I think that will satisfy the request that's being made on tonight. I just don't want, I want everybody to know that tonight is we had to look at the strategic plan because we're required to make sure that the district strategic plan, which is what has to be approved by, by the state, stays aligned to what we're doing. For instance, the day at the R1 Champs uh, session, that speaks to the dropout prevention goal. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of that program rolling out, is to get that mentoring piece in place. So all of that aligns to the strategic plan. And you'll hear Commissioner Devine say all the time, how does that align to the strategic plan? Just like dual enrollment tonight. We have to make sure that everything we do in the district aligns to the strategic plan. And in a review of that, and even knowing where we are after COVID, we needed to address those particular items. That is what we are looking at tonight. But I am requesting of the superintendent to go back to your goals, the measurables, have those ready for the board at our next committee. So when those come before us, they will be superintendent goals that will have your measurables yeah. in there where they can see those numbers. Right. But again, I will emphasize again, the, the superintendent goals are the district's right. goals. But, but I <laughs> think, through, I, and Dr. Wilson, I, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I need you to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the percentages that we do say, okay, move this 3%, move this by whatever, it may not happen by October. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It, it may be a whole nother year. The com community engagement piece. Right now, folk are getting right. real accustomed to being in schools. Yeah. It's not as easy as folk think it is to get folk back into those classrooms. You know, a lot of parents, you know, for various reasons, you know, but we've got to work on, let's set the strategic plan, which trickles down, as you said, to all the other aspects. But I'm asking that those things on here that we can do measurables on. Absolutely. Showing the increase in dual enrollment as Ms. Jennings has provided for us. What are we looking at doing? Bring those back to the board. Absolutely. Okay. Commissioner Bishop. Madam Chair, that's exactly where I was going because <laughs> I was asking Dr. Witherspoon when we have the value up, right. follow up meeting right. because this is evaluating this board. Exactly. That, the first word exactly. is board. Exactly. <laughs> Not superintendent, that's right? right? That's right. <laughs> so the, we we on the clock. That's the point I'm yeah. That's right. With this whole sheet. 
we're on the clock. But yeah. if you go a little further down there, the other word is district. Mm -hmm. That means teachers, mm -hmm. bus drivers, everybody, uh, custodians, coaches. And if we begin to try to pressurize the situation, then we're going to uh, 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 increase the burden on teachers, on cafeteria workers. And we don't, we don't need to do any more of that because of the alarm of burnout. Mm -hmm. And so while we may agitate the situation a little more to try to get the best out of this and say these measurements, Remember, we're measuring ourselves, and I'm okay with that because we are accountable first as a board. Right. But what I'm telling you is, y'all hear it every time I, I speak, teamwork is going to make the dream work. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at these goals and these actions, uh, coupled with how we drill it down with percentage points, just don't forget about the people who have to work these goals. Like when we start looking at, okay, when is this going to be – Measured and when are we going to put these as deliverables? What's the timeline look like? Don't look at time, look at people. And they have to deliver these because when they cascade, when they start, when we leave here and we vote on these, the work will begin. I know that, right, Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. And there's going to be departmental meetings, there's going to be, uh, you know, all kind of meetings going on to make this move the needle. And so, as they, he said, we're going to meet in March. That's, that's, that's a small window. It's already, January is almost halfway done. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about half of a month, a full month in February. That's one of the shortest months of the year. And then March. So I just want us to you know, be you know, very cognitive of the more we delay this, the more it can pressurize our staff. Okay? That's all I want to state. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bishop. Anyone else? Commissioner Lomanat? Thank you, Chairman Harris. Um, I, I think it would clear up a lot if we just simply call these either priorities or actions because all of the teachers and administrators that we send to professional development are going to call me and say these are not goals because we train them on what goals are. These aren't them because they're not measurable. So I think we should use the same language here that we're telling our teachers and administrators to use when they set goals because they are told all the time if that goal isn't measurable it's not a goal let's just call these priorities or actions and then we will set the goals underneath each of these and assign them as either board goals or superintendent goals or district goals but these themselves are simply steps that we are all going to take to try to reach an actual goal that we are still in the process of setting and, and Commissioner Lomanak, to, to your statement, and unfortunately, I've had the pleasure of sitting through the strategic planning session. It is a very strenuous week of working and planning strategies for the district. We can't rename strategies. Every district is required to have a strategic plan. This, we have to use the word strategy because it's the strategies of the district. We're not talking about the measurable goals, I think y'all you, 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 are kind of getting some things confused tonight, and it, it's not really up for debate. It's, these are the strategic actions that we have to take to make sure we are aligned to our strategic plan that we have to renew, what, every five years? There are some items we needed to tweak because of COVID to make sure we stay in alignment. That is what we are talking about tonight. This is not about you know going back to the teachers and just said this is the strategic plan that the superintendent uses with his cabinet folk, his executive directors, his chief of teaching, et cetera, to say these are the strategic items that we have to address and we have to come up with how we carry this out. I just gave the perfect example to decrease the dropout rate. R1 champs was created, and I can name several other things. Okay. To, to do the dual enrollment piece, there are several things that Ms. Jennings is doing to recruit students into that program. Same thing as AAP. AAP is struggling because Dr. Wismo, a lot of kids are interested now in dual enrollment. We know that. So again, this is the strategic plan of the district. It's a very thick document. This is what we're talking about tonight. I don't think we give this document to your teachers, correct? It's out there. Right. What we what this this does to everybody's point. This does get 
operationalized. Now, yes. one of the things, for example, at the next retreat, uh, at the elementary level, they're going to be talking about how those goals, if we're talking about decreasing the number of students, um, uh, you know, scoring level one or level two, or growth goals, those are enumerated. Mm -hmm. They are. Um, and those that, that may vary by school, vary by, um, uh, again, the variables that, that sometimes can be controlled or, or, or cannot be controlled. Those things are operationalized, mm -hmm. and, they are, and they are changed. And, 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 I, and, and as the chair said, I think we're all saying the same thing. Um, they are operationalized. Um, in terms of we take those these things there from a strategic standpoint to a tactical standpoint to a measurable standpoint and up and down the organization. That is indeed um, um, done. One of the things we do, and, and we've talked about this before um, uh, as well, this board, previous boards, um, uh, Depending on these, their their greater challenges or or opportunities, if you will, depending on 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 situation sites and so forth, that is taken into account as well as again though the, these get enumerated a, across and up and down um, the district. So that does happen. Um, um, one of the things that we 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 don't do, if you will, or we, those goals are shared. And this is, one, again, at the next next meeting that we're having, the, the retreat, uh, uh, staff is going to walk you through how that's done, how we, how we do that, and how we come up, and how principals, again, all this gets, does get enumerated. Principals have those meetings, whether it's, you know, K2, 3, 4, 5, or what have you, um, whether it's an EOC or whether it's, uh, again, third grade, fourth grade, pass already, and 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 so forth, and those goals are indeed um, um, uh, are are set. Uh, so it does that does indeed happen, and as a part of again, uh, just as as folks have said, and and, and Commissioner Bishop included, um, sometimes those get tweaked, right. and 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 we do need to tweak those. So those have to be tweaked, if you will. Sometimes before we do some other things, because it, it, again, as, as the board sets direction and uh, strategically and otherwise, again, the, the next thing that happens, those same goals, as, I, as I've said e even this evening, they become everybody's goals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. up and down the organization. So again, we've got to have time. What are the, what are the, what are the goals of the district? What does that look like for every school, for every department, for every classroom, again, depending on those, and how do we put resources, things in place, again, to achieve those? Uh, um, so that, that is indeed done. Okay. Uh, I still have my uh, hand up. And, um, uh, I'm, I'm getting to you. I want to make sure that Commissioner Lomanak is finished. You, you, well, I just want to say to Chairwoman Harris and Dr. Witherspoon, I agree with everything y'all just said. I, I really do. And Chairman Harris, you kept calling these strategic, tr strategic actions. Totally agree. Right. What they're not as goals. And all I'm saying is, let's just call these board, superintendent, and district strategic actions. The goals will then come underneath them when we attach something that's measurable, because that's I think the. I'm just trying to be precise about what we call these because we ask the same of our folks at the schools when they're developing goals. So all I'm saying is, these are actions. We'll come up with the goals apparently in the next month or so, and then those will be the things that we measure the district or the board or the superintendent by. That's, that's my only point. And, 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 and Commissioner Lomnick, and I, I hear you completely, but I think maybe because you haven't gone through the strategic process, you're not understanding why we're saying these are strategic goals. They're connected to the strategic plan of the district that we have to submit to the state. But there are some 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 of those goals because that's all the strategic plan is. It's goals. We can't call it a plan of action because the state said we can't call it a plan of action. It's called the strategic plan. 
So we have to make sure in the strategic plan, we identify goals for our district. What we are saying is these are those items that we need to tweak, look at, enhance, change, fix, whatever you want to call it, because of COVID. As Commissioner Devine stated last year, we need to go back and look at what? The strategic plan and the goals in the strategic plan that we need to address because of coming out of COVID. That is all we are doing tonight. So we're not talking about the measurable side. We can't call it anything but what it is. It's the strategic plan's goals. We can't call it a plan of, yeah, it's a plan of action. I agree wholeheartedly, but it's the strategic plan of action. So that's why it's called the, 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 the goals of, and as Commissioner Bishop said, the board, superintendent, and district goals. That's the strategic plan. Strategic plan includes everybody. So I just want to clarify that, that that's why it's being called strategic uh, uh, actions. Commissioner Weston, and I'm coming to you, Commissioner Clyburn. When I looked at this and being new to the board, I have to go with my first look. Right. And it says board, superintendent, district, goals. I like strategic plan because then it tells me these are plans and now we're going to set the goals to reach that. So taking strategic actions to reduce the percentage of teacher turnover, it's a strategy and then we have to set things to do. And then the goal would be to reduce the percentage of teacher turnover by 3%, 5%, 10%, or whatever. So that's why it, it did not, if you said strategic plan, then it made sense to me, gotcha. but, but goals they didn't make. I got you, okay. I got you. Thank you, Commissioner Weston. Commissioner Clyburn. Um, so I was just trying to come up with an, some kind of idea to you try to, you know, Amen. find a way to, to explain, you know, this situation. You know, I can't explain it, but is there a possibility of us bringing in um, an independent person to explain why you're saying it needs to be one way as opposed to what their you know other members are believing it should be just to explain why it do you understand what I'm saying? No. Okay. I think we're on the same track it's just the terminology I, I, well, I, I, I think the issue is sometimes we can be caught up in the wording <laughs> We're all saying the same thing. We're all saying the same thing. But I have to call it what it is. It's the strategic plans, goals, that we have to tweak coming out of COVID. Can we approve these so we can move on <laughs> to the superintendent's goals that's going to show you the numbers of us getting to where we need to be? Madam Chair, Divine. call for a previous question. Okay. Previous question, a motion is on the floor to approve the board superintendent district goals, which is aligned to the strategic plan. It's been properly second. And at this time, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is six yeas and one extension. The motion passed to approve the board superintendent district goals. Thank you, everyone. We'll move on now to 11-4, um, which is the board report. And um, we do have a presentation that we need to make on tonight. Hold my fan. One presentation that we need to make. And we're going to read this letter in. And it says, Dear Mr. Devine, and this is from the South Carolina School Board Association, congratulations on achieving 15 years of school board service for Richland One. On behalf of the officers of the, and staff of the South Carolina School Board Association, thank you. You have played a critical role in guiding your district and have invested countless hours to improve public education. SCSBA is happy to be a part of this recognition by providing a lapel pin for you to wear at school board meetings and SCSBA events and a certificate. Your name and years of service will also appear in the annual convention program. 
What an accomplishment you have made. Again, congratulations. And if anyone at SCSBA can be of assistance to you in any way, do not hesitate to give us a call. And it is signed by Scott Price, our executive director. So we want to present Commissioner Devine with his 15-year pen oh, wow. of services to the school board. And also his certificate. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> At this time, we will open the floor for any board report from any board member. This is where they can speak to any activities or events that they've been a part of. Uh, as you all know, the board does participate in chat with the chair, as well as several other reading events and initiatives, lunch buddies with our uh, schools throughout the district. So at this time, we'll open the floor for anyone that has a report. Commissioner Bishop. Well, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, to uh, the senior statesman on this board, Jamie Devine, 15 years, brother. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. You know, uh, every time he gets older, I get older on this board. Oh, <laughs> so, Jesus. My goodness, man. It's, it's been a while, and it's been a pleasure serving with you. Um, two, two items I want just to discuss that may not be directly uh, relevant or germane to this district. But uh, with Dr. Witherspoon, I'm, I'm, I'm at a level of concern, but I believe that we do have solution-based conversation here as a board. Uh, seeing what happened with the NFL, with um, his name is Damar. Mm -hmm. um, Hamlin. What's the last name again? Hamlin. Hamlin, Hamlin that's right, number three. Um, uh, well, it's probably, it was a, it was an alarm when they said this kind of incident can happen more in baseball than football. And um, I know uh, maybe three years ago we um, bought more defibrillators throughout the district. And so as um, we began to embark on baseball season, uh, I would um, I would. I would draw some interest in to making sure that those defibrillators are at baseball games, let alone football or basketball games, um, because, you know, it was a matter of life and death for him to survive um, on that day because of that defibrillator. So I uh, just want to bring that to the attention of the board and the superintendent. Um, the other one is... Uh, the situation that happened with the six-year-old who shot his student. Teacher. Um, teacher. 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 Did I say student? Sorry. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for the correction. Um, now, the Witherspoon, are we still keeping our same protocols in place uh, as far as security? Um, and maybe there's something you can report out during the superintendent's report. I know that we're getting into the playoffs uh, basketball. Um, and it gets intense when it gets down to this level, let alone throughout the season. And just wanted to make sure that we were still practicing every step of prevention uh, to make sure that nothing happens out of emotional frustration during co competitive um, opportunities. So uh, those two things I hope that we can address because um, um, I, I, I don't think it's just my concern. Uh, these things may be several people's concerns as these two alarming incidents happen throughout our world and our society. So um, just wanted to mention that. And for the point privilege, as I look uh, in, re, uh, in retrospect, I had an amazing opportunity to be, and I hope this is past all of our youth, uh, our students' bedtime, had the awesome opportunity to be Santa Claus <laughs> at uh, Hyatt Park. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that was a grand opportunity. I've never been Santa Claus. Is that what I, did I break somebody's heart in here or something? Okay. No. So okay, all right, all right, all right. But it was also an opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry if I hurt somebody's feeling about that because <laughs> Santa Claus is still real. I was Santa Claus, all right? I was Santa Claus. But um, we, we did um, have opportunity to be at Higher Park and um, uh, encourage children to understand um, uh, this is a great time to uh, be in chair. So thank you to Holly Park and everyone there. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bishop. Any additional reports? 
Commissioner Devine. Thank you, um, Chairwoman Harris. Um, Dr. Witherspoon, thank you to you and your staff. Um, we have been on a call with you all during the break when we had the issue with the Conley Apartments. Um, you and your staff, senior staff, uh, jumped right into um, 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 emergency mode to get our schools ready and our students ready uh, to come back to school, and we appreciate what you guys did. And again, thank you for assisting with the logistics to getting our students that were displaced um, at the various hotels around town um, ready to go. And we appreciate the efforts of the community that helped out as well. Appreciate the efforts of the uh, local principals um, that were uh, definitely involved and they made sure that um, all their students were accounted for. I think on that Wednesday when we came back and I believe a majority of either all showed up that particular day and we're still working through through that. I did have a chance to stop by two of the schools today and um, they, they're continuing to work um, with that. And again, I thank you and the, and the senior staff and, and the principals for making that happen. I know our um, social worker as well as our parent liaison uh, personnel was deployed to the ho hotels and today I think some had to be displaced again from their units uh, to other ho hotels and um, and so staff is in constant contact with those families and so uh, we're looking to continue to uh, assist them the best that we, we can within our resources so I just want to thank you and uh, thank the staff for making that happen um, these young people are dealing with a lot coming back from Christmas, being displaced, uh, going from uh, place to place. Uh, but they had smiles on their face. Uh, they were still re resilient. They were still learning the best that they could. And I hope that um, they will continue to uh, be resilient in, in, in what they've done. And then also, um, based on the circumstances, um, I would hope that uh, we don't see too much of uh, trauma and we you know we're talking about the goals and strategic plan of the organization uh, that we work uh, within uh, some boundaries to allow some um, grace uh, for these young people and also for the staff because the staff has to deal with these young people uh, each and every day. And so, um, for example, I don't know if this to be fact, but I know when we had the flood, we, we adjusted maybe some absences or uh, tardies uh, for our young people, or maybe we, we could just code it differently. Um, for those students um, at those schools that or the students that were affected, maybe we can just code it a little different uh, based off the circumstance. You know, if they come late or if they don't necessarily come, we can work with those families to ensure that they don't uh, become truant or there's a large number of absences that we uh, miscode them. So if we can uh, continue to work on that, which I know you all are, and I appreciate that um, as, as well. Again, we thank the community for coming to support our, our school with the care packages and, and again, continue to support our young people. Um, and with that, Madam Chair, um, I yield back my time. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have the, the, the um, ethical principles document that we need to sign. Eva, when do we need to do that? Now or after, at the end of the meeting? So we will do that at the um, end of the meeting. Dr. Witherspoon, um, I, I want to also, uh, I got, I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, I also want to, um, Thank your staff for um, a lot of you don't know this. Um, we had several pipes mm -hmm. to burst and flood out a whole lot of schools, about six or seven. And we were getting calls left and right during the entire holiday. But I am, you know, want to, wanting to say publicly thank you to Dr. Witherspoon, to Mr. Brown, our security director, to Melvin Henry's Melvin team. Henry's team is amazing cool um, because we were out, we, we had some hor horrific situations out here. Um, but the blessing is that the kids were out of school. And when Dr. Witherspoon shared with the board that the bulk of those, those damages have been mitigated already, mm -hmm. it just shows how powerful our, our team, Richland One team is. I think it's one school, Hopkins Middle. We've got to do a little bit more repairs because I believe water there was about three feet deep in that theater is pretty bad over there but I just want to say publicly thank you Dr. Witherspoon because you really didn't have a break I'm just going to be honest it was something <laughs> happening every day um, just back to back it was calls coming from everywhere even people in the community was calling to let us know things were going on at our schools and I thank the community um, for, for looking out to see something ain't right at a school and, and to make a phone call um, that, that goes a long ways but to Melvin Henry staff to our security team under the direction of Mr. Brown and even to Raymond Perkins team all involved city city water and county water all of these guys fire department 
was 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 on on their game throughout the holidays. So I want to say thank you for that. And then I want us to stop and I want us to pause for a moment of silence because during the break, right at the end of the the beginning of the break, we lost a nine year old student at Hawkins Elementary. Mm -hmm. We also lost a 16 year old student at Keenan. And just a few days ago, we lost a four year old at Kaufman Road. And I just think that we just need to take a moment of silence for those families because it's a hard thing to bury your child. Thank you, um, Dr. Witherspoon. I know we, they're still working through some funeral arrangements mm -hmm. uh, with the, the last situation, but um, those board members that can attend, we would greatly appreciate that. That really means a lot to those families um, when we, we are there at their children's homegoing services. I um, also want to thank Dr. Witherspoon and Carrie Abel mm -hmm. for the awesome R1 Champs program. If you did not mm -hmm. make it to the press conference today, and I know you're going to talk about this, Doc, so I'm not going to steal mm -hmm. your thunder. You want to go back and listen to the stories. You want to hear the interviews of these these men that are volunteering in our schools to just be a source of encouragement to our students. So I want to publicly thank him, um, um, Kerry, for what he's doing. I know, Commissioner Devine, you're going to talk about Board Appreciation Month. Um, we will look at a board work session in February. So Eva will be sending out some dates. Uh, you are preferring Fridays. So we will have a board work session in, in, in February. Um, Dr. Wiswan, I'm also going to ask, you know, as we did the National Merit Scholars and certainly proud of those young people and what they're doing, but we are also ask that, you know, there are students out here getting awards in the millions that we work to identify those students so we can celebrate them all. Um, I think that that is, that is important that we, we recognize all of the students that are uh, receiving major scholarship offerings in their schools um, so that the board will know and the board can celebrate those families as well. Um, I think I've gone through everything that I had on the, my list. And then I also wanted to share a, phone, a, a rather funny moment. Um, at the end of year holiday party that is hosted here, um, there was a Richland One Gospel Chorale that was <laughs> under the direction of Kurt Jamie Devine, Kurt Franklin. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and in four hours, that video clip, Karen York, had over 2,000 views. So it's out there somewhere in TikTok world. But it was an amazing video. And to hear so many parents and families saying how much they appreciate Commissioner Bishop seeing the district come together and have fun like that too. Dr. V and Minor, who just voice is phenomenal and Miss mm -hmm. Alden over there and Miss Fields and even Tracy Dixon that's from Nutrition all came together and did an awesome job on Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful job. And who else? Oh, oh she said they got set up. But it was a great, <laughs> a great event. Um, um, Dr. Witherspoon that you host for your staff and we were just excited as a board to be a part of that. So I just wanted to share that with everyone just from a a humorous perspective that in four hours we were at 2,000 views. You know, that was major. Um, but at this time, we're going to turn it back over to um, Commissioner Devine because there are a few things he needs to do still. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, January is School Board Recognition Month. Um, recognition Month. Um, as a previous uh, chairperson or president of the School Board Association, uh, we salute nearly 600 school board members in, in January each year, particularly across the state of South Carolina. The theme for this year is Forward Together. Uh, it reminds us of the leadership roles and responsibilities of school board members, while also acknowledging the need for the collective uh, to join us, the parents, the teachers, our students, our administrators, particularly as public schools continue to deal with the challenges of the past few years. As elected and appointed representatives uh, of the people, uh, we represent the local community's voice and vision for public schools. So if you would join me, uh, those of you here with us tonight, join me in saluting uh, uh, my colleagues uh, in Richland One uh, for their service and time and talents that they give to this district. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Let's give them a round of applause, please. And so as we salute school board members from across the state, uh, there's a number of items and things that we can do. And one thing that we do each and every year, and I think COVID over the last two years has not allowed us to do it, uh, we all sign this ethical principles um, uh, 
poster that's to my right, and uh, we see the one from years past that's over there. And we're asking each board member to take this pledge. Each board across the state of South Carolina of the 73 uh, board uh, school boards across the state, each member has signed this. Um, and they uh, pledged efforts to improve public education in the community, and we will solemnly try to. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but there is a um, list of things that we try to do. It's just a pledge of uh, principles as board members. One is to represent the interests of the entire district while making decisions and to rely on available facts and on our judgment rather than individuals or special interest groups. One is to also understand the proper role of the board to set policies governing the district and to hire the chief administrative officer to carry out those policies. Also to encourage an open exchange of ideas by all board members during the decision-making process, um, to communicate concerns and public reaction to board policies and school programs to the superintendent and other board members in a professional manner, and then to study current educational issues and to participate in training program such as those offered through the South Carolina School Boards Association, and finally to make our district's educational setting the best possible to encourage all students to achieve and to love learning. So at the end of the program, Madam Chair or Ms. Wilson, what are we, we're gonna sign these at the end of the program? Or you wanna sign us sign now? The in the meeting, you sign the big one. Correct, I'm, no, right, you wanna sign now or at the end of the program? Okay, so if each board member would get up at the end, we could all sign that. We'll frame, uh, we'll frame another one because that's I think it was 2020, maybe 2019. When we signed that one. If each one of us can sign that, let's get a group picture. We'll send that to SESBA, and that'll be plastered um, with our other board members. Some other board members. I went to a meeting um, um, just yesterday. Another district. Um, they did the same thing, and so we're doing this across the state. And again, it's it's, it's January. It is board uh, school board member appreciation across the state and the state of South Carolina. So again, thank you uh, to my colleagues. We thank you for the work that you've done. Uh, we look forward to uh, our continued success um, as well. And Madam Chair, uh, so that concludes that uh, portion of my presentation. Also, I want to add to, um, uh, to my voice to the uh, agenda as it pertains to the upcoming board retreat. Uh, in February, uh, Madam Chair, you know we do this uh, yearly, and 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 uh, if you would um, uh, get us a someone or some entity or some party to come and allow us to really do, and we hadn't done it, I don't think since 2018, 2019, a true board um, evaluation of the board, because how can we evaluate? superintendent and staff if we don't evaluate ourselves. So we need a self-evaluation as board members. And so I would um, ask that you, uh, as we've done in, in the past, as, as the board chair, the board chair uh, brings in some uh, one to help us through that process. And um, uh, so I, I look forward to us uh, making that um, a priority this, this year for this board to have a self board self-evaluation uh, moving forward so that we can uh, sit, just see where we are. Um, the information, it is what it is. Uh, matter of fact, just this past week, weekend, the School Boards Association, uh, we had our annual board retreat, and that's one of the things that we did. We brought in um, two consultants, and they talked with us each about um, where we were as a board. Uh, we did a membership um, 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 evaluation, and not evaluation, we did a membership um, survey and it came back favorable um, the average score was about four and a half to about 4.8 on a one to one to five uh, <coughs> point scale um, and so as an association uh, we seem to be doing uh, pretty good um, uh, we had a response rate of about 30 percent um, out of the 600 plus um, school board members so that's pretty good most uh, uh, return rates about 20%, and so we were about 30%, so we were pleased with that. So this weekend, uh, we, we learned a lot. We had six new members that came aboard, and so uh, we were pleased with um, the, um, the responses that we received from our membership to let us know what we're doing, how we're doing, and then we also to provide that strategic plan as an organization from a state perspective to where we want to go and where we see ourselves in the next two, three, five years on down the road. And so as we sit on, on our local boards, we should be doing the same going forward. So we look forward to uh, you bringing that to us uh, uh, in our uh, next board retreat. So with that, Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Devine, and we will definitely um – begin working on that. Are there any additional board reports at this time? All right, seeing none, we will move on to 12. Chair, yep. would you just address the issue and do clarification 
of board policy, so it won't be a, um, a communication issue with um, the water situation in the rural area? Okay, a absolutely. Um, if you all recall, and Dr. Whisper, if you want, I can speak to it. If, if, if you all recall, and it's not a policy, um, there was some, some water issues in the town of Eastover that led to the water being out at our local school there. Town has been having some issues with the tanks there, and what they were working to do was to put the water system on two smaller tanks. And this is what the mayor shared with me. In doing so, the water was running fairly slow at the school. So at that time, any time there is a water issue, and Dr. Wilson, you probably could speak to this better than I can, there is a protocol, would mm -hmm. you call it that, that we followed as all but considered an emergency type protocol of things that we, we put in place. And that is to make sure drinking water is at the school. That's why bottled water is kept at the warehouse for emergency cases. That porta potties are available that young people as well as the teachers have a means to going and relieving themselves as well as sanitation stations. That's once they're finished, you know, doing whatever, they can clean their hands. That is not just germane to Richland One. Every district does that. You go to the average district, and they got a warehouse full of water right now. They got porta potties on speed dial because this happens quite a bit. You might remember there's been some pipes to burst in Columbia, boil water advisory. We've got to send water in. We the water's not working over here. They're working on this, then we got to send porta potties. It doesn't just happen in the rural area. It happens across the district. It doesn't just happen in Richland One. It ha it happens across the country, and that is one of the many emergency, I would call protocols, that the district have in place. Some ask, well, why didn't you send the children home? Because there have been instances, remember this district is urban, suburban, and it's rural. We've had issues at schools where we had no lights. <laughs> and we, oh, we're going to send the kids home. Bus drivers came back to the school with a full bus. Why? Because parents are working. And the district has an obligation to keep those children safe. So we cannot leave a child at home because there's no power at the school. Or we can't leave a child at home on the porch because there's no water. We have to consider the safety of our children because we are responsible for them. So where many didn't understand why the district was making some of the decisions the superintendent had made to put those, that is a standard protocol. We have had water issues for years, and we will continue to have them because that's just the world we live in. But when those issues occur, and to your point, Commissioner Weston, I appreciate that, we have to have protocols in place because we cannot just send the children home. We've had gas leaks. We've had to fully evacuate schools to other schools. We even have to evacuate sometimes, if necessary, to churches. These are all safety plans that the district have in place. But a lot of times, we can't always put that out because our goal is to keep the children what? Safe. So there are a lot of protocols in place, not just here in Richland One. They are across the district. They are across the country. You go and talk to another school board, another superintendent, they're going to tell you if they have a water issue, we got to send in water, we got to send porta potties and give them a way to clean their hands. And, and depending on the, ex the extent, Dr. Woods, when I really want to thank Ms. Dixon in, in, in our nutrition department, because the first day we were able to provide a hot meal. But if that water issue persisted to day two, we would go to a bag meal because there was no way to for her to prepare the food there at site or whatnot. So just want to make sure that we are publicly sharing because I know sometimes when you don't know, you don't know, and it's not because you don't know. It's because we haven't shared it. So we just want everyone to know that that is a protocol. Right now, tomorrow, XYZ Elementary School has no water. Superintendent is going to deploy security and nutrition and all those folks to go to that school with a truck that has water, porta potties are going to be arriving shortly, and so is your sanitation stations. That is that is protocol. So just wanted to make sure we shared that. And thank you so much for for pointing that out. Any additional questions or comments from anyone? Okay. If not, we will move on now. Dr. Whisper, you probably could have covered that in twelve <laughs> to the superintendent's report twelve point one. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, as was stated, this is our first meeting of 2023. 
So we hope um, everyone had a um, restful and enjoyable winter break and happy new year to everyone. Uh, as was stated, a lot of a lot of my items we've covered, but uh, some bear uh, repeating. We did have our um, um, media conference this morning about our R1 champs, Caring Hearts, Making Positive Shifts, that initiative. Next week, we will be deploying the first group of R1 champ volunteers into our schools. And again, the goal of this initiative is to increase the number of adult male role models on our campuses and to positively impact school climate and culture. Uh, I want to thank the gentlemen that um, were able to show up uh, uh, today. Uh, there were some others that were scheduled to be here uh, or had planned to be here, but their schedules um, um, did not allow. Uh, thank we had Commissioner Harris, Commissioner Devine, Commissioner Clyburn. Uh, we're here, um, and as the chair uh, spoke about, uh, Mr. Kerry Abel, we appreciate him and his team. Uh, uh, the volunteers and the trainings that have been going on. And, and the point is, too, we're still looking for those volunteers uh, to join us. Uh, so you can reach out. There's information on our website uh, if you want to uh, be a part, or you can contact your, your, your local um, school as well. And we'll get you trained and checked and, and all of those things. All Richard One families are invited and encouraged to attend our We Are One Family Engagement Summit on Saturday, January 21st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Creighton Middle School. This event is being hosted by the Office of Federal and State Programs. The summit will include sessions for parents and sessions for students in kindergarten through 12th grade. Guest speakers and presenters will include educator Akko Kambon of Visionary Leaders Institute and children's book authors and former USC football players Langston Moore and Preston Thorne. Families will be able to pick up free to go lunches at the end of the event. Every family that attends will receive a package that includes reading and math toolkits as well as books. The registration link is posted on our website at richland1.org. And we are always looking for even more talented teachers and support staff to join Team Richland One. Our Human Resources Department will hold a winter career fair on Saturday, January 28th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at W.J. Keenan High School. Representatives from schools and departments will be there with information on employment opportunities and incentives for certified and classified staff. The deadline to register for the career fair is Wednesday, January 25th. The registration link and other details about this event are posted on our website at richland1.org slash careers, www.richland1.org slash careers. I want to remind our parents that we are accepting magnet program applications for the 2023-2024 school year. The application deadline is January 31st. Parents can again go to our website for more information to access the application portal. Also a reminder, Friday, January 13th, will be an early release day for students. And on Monday, January 16th, all of our schools and administrative buildings will be closed in observance of the holiday celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. <laughs> Martin Luther King, Jr. Regular schedules will resume Tuesday, January 17th. And it has been stated, but I certainly uh, want to um, reemphasize this, January is School Board Recognition Month, and the South Carolina Board's theme, has, they've chosen Forward Together as this year's theme. The theme reminds us of the leadership roles and responsibilities of school board members, including the seven board members here in Richland One and the more than 600 across state of South Carolina that serve on boards as elected or appointed representatives of the people in their local communities that they represent and being that voice and vision for public schools. And we've uh, already thanked our board members, but I would like to do that again. Let's give our, our board members here in Richmond one another round. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, just to... Uh, um, do some follow-up on a couple of items. Um, I, I too, want to uh, thank staff, uh, local schools, um, um, uh, principals, and um, family engagement specialists, counselors, and those, uh, as, as Mr. Devine spoke about, working um, with the, the colony 
um, uh, uh, apartment, and, and, and my team knows this. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we met, uh, of course, virtually, but we met on New Year's Eve mm-hmm. uh, to um, you know, assess what's going on, what, what did we need to do uh, to make sure that um, uh, information, we had enough information and we were communicating, uh, certainly with, with um, the apartment complex uh, management, City of Columbia, uh, to make sure things were in place um, and to, to lower the disruption. Uh, thank the, the, the team, um, uh, uh, Dr. Tracy Cooper and others mm-hmm. on staff, Dr. Mott and our staff, making sure we had the rosters um, and, and, and so forth. But um, Madam Chair and board members, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 when those types of things happen, we do um, um, show up. Commissioner Bishop, to, to your thing, to your to, to the comments and, and things that you brought up, uh, we do have those defibrillators uh, out and about. We do have uh, athletic trainers that are uh, at those events, and we will continue. And as things happen, just as, as you've mentioned, we always, um, uh, whether it's tabletop or debriefing or ask those questions as, as, as a team, um, how are our processes and procedures? Do we need to tweak those? So it, whether it was during the holidays um, and, and the instances uh, that, that you have uh, brought up, we still continue to uh, monitor and, and review uh, what we do. Um, Mr. Brown and his team, uh, for example, um, 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 you know, follows up on reports. He certainly reports back to this team, uh, executive team cabinet, on um, you know, things we might want to look at or might want to tweak. So we continue to do that. Uh, with regard to, to playoff, uh, and I would say that that first um, uh, starts with what we do with our coaches' convocation, and Coach Matz was here. Uh, but what we speak about, um, and, and, and the, the, the chair always speaks at those events, we talk with our, our coaches uh, and we cascade that to our students about sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. And that is something that uh, certainly the high school league uh, Mr. Jerome Singleton, and he um, uh, emphasizes that, and his team emphasizes that across the state of, of, of South Carolina. It is a, 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 con- a contest that we have, if you will, but we're all Team Richland 1. Mm-hmm. You know, we may be at different sites, different locations, uh, but, but that is something we do uh, talk with our, with our coaching staff about, talk to our administrators uh, um, about, and that gets cascaded to our players. And the same thing happens, you know, whether they're in district contests or whether they're uh, among um, uh, teams and, and in other districts. So we want to make sure that, that as we talked about and showed today, we have student athletes. And, and, and with that comes uh, all that that entails. So we want to be good students. We want to be uh, good role models for our students and exercise that on and off the field. Uh, uh, but, but those things we do. Uh, and when we, we unfortunately, when we do have those uh, those school shootings and, and things that happen across the country, uh, uh, again, we review our protocols. We make sure that um, things are, are, are in place. Um, uh, we maintain um, with our SROs that are on all of our campus uh, that those lines of communication are open. The same with our local uh, law enforcement um, uh, entities, and they do the same with us as mm-hmm. things have happened. You know, we had some of the um, um, hoax things that happened, of, of, you know, several months ago, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and certainly I, I appreciate then and now and always um, the, the proactive nature of, of, of our local law enforcement mm-hmm. um, that, that mm-hmm. were on that, that reached out to local districts. We did the same thing. Uh, so we, and, and again, to your points, we do continue uh, to, to monitor those um, instances and making sure that, that if we need to tweak protocols and, and procedures, um, we do that. So we, we do stay on, those, on top of those things. Uh, even when we get wind of, 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 of threats or things that might happen, again, we, 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 we double up on those on those efforts, um, uh, we do at, at, at our sporting events and other events. Um, again, if we get wind of things, uh, we do tweak the number of officers and some other protocols that I won't speak of. 
um, publicly, but we do have, uh, again, and we, we, we talk about this, assets uh, that are seen and unseen um, that, that um, work with us. And, and uh, as, as Chairwoman Harris said, that, that safety is, 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 is goal one, is, is, is job one um, um, for us. So, Madam Chair, members of the board, that concludes um, my report at this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Witherspoon, for your report. We'll open the floor for any sure. questions any board member may have for Dr. Witherspoon in regards to his report. Okay. Commissioner Devine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not sure if he mentioned this, but want to put this on his radar as well as yours, and we've done this in years past. I'd like to have a meeting with the city and the county to discuss mm -hmm. some successes and some challenges that we've had in the past and how we move forward as a district and as a region um, with the three entities working together. Um, I did have conversations with some of persons from those different bodies, and so uh, they would like for us to reach out to them. So if we could work on that, I greatly appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions, comments, anyone? Okay. Wonderful. We are now down to item number 13, which is the announcement that says the next regular scheduled board meeting of the Richland One Board of Commissioners will be held on Tuesday, January the 24th, 2023, at Dreer High School at 3319 Millwood Avenue here in Columbia, South Carolina at 29201. If there is no objection from the board, we can now consider ourselves dismissed. Thank you, and everyone have a good night. Okay.